Hey everybody and welcome back to iHeart Board Games Live on Twitch. Today we are here celebrating Jen Cant with special coverage of Detective, a modern crime board game, which is published by Portal Games and designed by Ignacy Chebacek. I am Ronald and with me I have Joe. And our other hosts are here as well. Melissa. And Jesse. And we play board games on the internet for your enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, JG Law. Hi, JG Law. Hi, JG Law. Hello. Come to uh, bring the law in our detective work. Yep. Because we'll be needing your help. Please help us. Yes. yes we're definitely going to need your help. If you're in here today, case. you can help us solve um, the crime we're that we're team. going to be investigating. And it requires Googling, I heard. So anyone yes. can Google at home. Yes. Well, we're only allowed to Google certain specific things. Really? <gasps> that was me. Okay. Like, We're only allowed to give Google specific things that it tells us we can Google. We are not allowed to otherwise look things up. Do that. I was going to Google Detective uh, Case One Board Game Solution. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so we have a lot of stuff um, at our disposal today in the game of Detective. Um, Detective is a game um, where we are playing modern day crimes, a crime solving team. Um, each of us plays an investigator, and we're given a case to solve, and we will be using technology to solve that case, but also a deck of cards. Very similar to the game Unlock Cards. The cards remind me of those ones, the size and shape. Uh, like a Dixit card. Yeah, they do. Like yeah, like a Dixit card. card. Um, Sharper so colors. we did have to sign up for a special website, which is called the Antares Database. We'll be showing you that um, as we need it in the game. And we'll also be showing you the regular game board, which we have here, um, the cards and all of that stuff. So um, if you plan to play Detective yourself, warning, spoilers ahead. Mm -hmm. Spoilers, um, sweetie. But if you don't want to spend money on Detective, you can play along with us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're here to help. <laughs> That's right. So Detective, the game, the box, comes with one overarching campaign that involves five cases. We're just going to be playing the first case today, which is called A Man with a Golden Watch. Mm. Um, and there's going to be a lot of reading and thinking today. So um, feel free to chime in in the chat and give us advice. Help us if you can. Um, so... In order to get started, we need to turn in the case book here to case number one, a man with a golden watch. So someone who isn't me can read this. All right. Just start on introduction? Or yep, right there. Mm -hmm. In front of you lies the first scenario of the campaign, the mystery of the golden watch. During the investigation, focus on the primary objective assigned to you by your superiors. Carefully look over every branching thread related to this case. Some of them are irrelevant, while others will unlock new meaning in future cases, allowing you to see them in a different light. Scattered throughout the cases are fragments of a greater whole that will slowly start piercing together. Piercing together, probably. No, oh yeah, not piercing. That, that was in the orc game. Remember the important initial leads presented to you in this case. <clears throat> Remember the important initial lead presented to you in this intro. Take good notes. Yes, we all have paper and pencil. Uh, you can help us take notes at home as well. They actually recommend making a mind map in the game uh, using a bulletin board or a whiteboard to write out all the different things with uh, post-it notes and sure how right. to connect them all together. That's what the yes. rule book recommends. It says in oh, dealing in the form of a mind map. It's right here. I read it. Ah. Carefully read the cards and try to draw valid conclusions before deciding to pursue the further leads. Most importantly, do not rush from card to card. Doing this will take you down a rabbit hole of information, causing the investigation to spiral out of control yeah, due to the sheer volume of information. Good luck! Good luck? Good luck! Uh, hey, Rex! Hey, Rex! Today is Sunday. Sunday, and we're here to solve a crime, and you can help yes. us. Yes. yes. Antares Headquarters, July 5th. 8, 11 a.m. Eastern. July 5th. Yes, July 5th, 8, 
11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You got that. E-S-T. We'll also be able to look back in this book and right. see it again, <laughs> so. It's already printed. Yeah. The briefing room located on the first floor of the newly built first floor. building. Newly built building. <laughs> Write down anything you think is important. <laughs> the newly built building complex seems, uh, I guess like, wait, what's that word? Sterile. Sterile. That, that's what I was thinking, but it's got that L in it. Sterile. Sterile. It doesn't look, never mind. Continue. Anyway, light creamy walls with glazed windows overlook the James River. Glazed windows, huh? Sterile. Meryl? Sterile? Meryl? <laughs> it doesn't look right when I read it. Never mind. A large white table, chromed handrails with black chairs, and a gray carpet fills the room. Chrome leaves fingerprints. Despite being light and spacious, it lacks warmth. Hello, says Delaware, as he rolls his wheelchair to the head of the table. He has a tired, wrinkled face. Long strands of gray hair fall over his piercing eyes. He places his green notebook on the table. The task at hand is quite peculiar. The State Department has asked Antares to investigate a potential scandal. A few days ago, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Poland sent a con confidential note asking for clarifications of an unusual event. Earlier, in the Ying Auction House, a pocket watch with a gold-plated bezel appeared. Bezel? Bezel? Bezel. 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 Right. Bezel appeared. It turned out to be serious. The watch is in the database of objects lost during World War II. The Poles identified it as a showpiece that was looted by the Germans from a Museum of the Land in Posen, Poland, during the occupation of Poland. Mm -hmm. For Poles, it is both symbolic and sentimental value, as it was a memento to the great pianist Ignacy Pad Padre Ruski. Pararuski. According to the data provided by the Poles, the watch was stolen by the Nazi named Kurt Bluchach. Of course. Something like that. Right. Everyone of knows course. Him. You will find records <laughs> about him in our database. He, uh -huh. <clears throat> he clears his throat, glances at his notebook as if he was trying to remember something, and then resumes his briefing. The auction house bought the watch for about $5,000 from a man named Rupert Owens, who apparently did not realize how valuable the item was. The watch is already secured in our evidence store. The matter is delicate. If this blue lock, whatever, Kurt, as he, right. as he also goes as, this Kurt by some strange stroke of luck, have lived after the war of the United States, it would be very unfortunate for political reasons. At least that's what the current administration thinks. Worse yet, the press will begin to sniff around. It's only a matter of time before the issue turns into a scandal that I would very much like to avoid in the first year of this agency's operation. Our task is to find answers before someone finds questions. He looks over the briefing room, checks his notes, and sighs heavily. Ah, and finally, one very sad piece of information. Mm -hmm. The morning after tomorrow at the Olivent Cemetery, Michael Slander's funeral will take place. The morning after tomorrow, July 7th. As you know, he was one of the police consultants who helped create our unit. Slanders? Sla uh, oh, no, not Slanders. Slater. Slaters. Sla well, how'd you get the book? <laughs> I'm, I'm confused about it. Where is it? Michael Slaters. Oh, no, that's not Slaters? even close. Slater. A.C. Slater. Oh, that. <laughs> I don't know why I put an in there. I was reading stupid, fast. Stupid Slanders. Uh, slanders. <laughs> 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 All right. Mm -hmm. He was.
was a victim in, of a hit and run. And a slander. A <laughs> nasty end to a perfect career in the police force. It would be nice if someone from our team could attend the funeral. Mm -hmm. We will gather at Richmond PD at 8 a.m. the day after tomorrow. From there, the police column will go to the cemetery. So, 8 a.m., Richmond PD, the day after tomorrow. Yeah, okay. no one wrote that down. Well, just just so just so. You well, know. I'm not going. Are you going? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean somebody has to go. It's he said going. someone. It would be nice if someone. Do you want to go? Oh, I guess I'll. We go. all have to go together. Whoa. We can't just split off and go different directions. So when is this funeral? I'll write something down. 8 a.m. The day Michigan. after tomorrow. July 7th. 8 a.m. 48 hours from now. July 7th. Be at Richmond PD. At Richmond PD. Which is right here. Okay. All right. Do I continue preparing the case? Yep. Move the time marker to 9 a.m. Done. Add four star authority tokens to the token pool. Done. Mm -hmm. Uh, goal of the case, investigate the events leading up to the watch from Poland ending up in the Ying auction house. Discover all stages and find evidence to confirm them. That is the most important goal. Yes. We need to focus on that at all costs. And don't stand in the pentagram. Right. You have four <laughs> days to finish the investigation. Four days. Four days. Okay, we only have four days. Stress limit for this case? Seven. seven. Yes. If we go, if we get seven stress, we immediately have to stop and solve the case. Right. It's also minus one point for every stress we have. Do you need the further leads? These are going to be our leads that we're going to go down to, um, to start. And according to what I've read, the recommendation is to start with all of these leads before we start going down any of the paths. Like, understand all of these things before we go down one of them. Hey, Rob, can I say I just made someone in the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Don't stand in the pentagram. Don't do it. Don't do it. Even if it seems like a good idea <laughs> at the time. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> like I did. <laughs> hey, why has everybody's got theirs turned over? So we got lines on the other side like an actual... Notes. I want to make my own lines. Oh, okay. He wants to make a mind map. Yeah. Oh, a mind map. A lined map. map. Oh, okay. Well, we'll turn it over this way then. Okay. So we have, uh, what, six um, Not my first leads here that we can do. Lunch. <laughs> We're going to link that to something. It says to put a little token here on day three to remind us that we want to go to the funeral. If you decide to attend. We can go there on day three. One word, and it rhymes with Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Evan Diesel, thanks for 12 months of subscriptions. 12 months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what she this does. So you just can't do. see this it. It's just yeah. cleaner. But Sharon Osborne taught us this. <laughs> but Cheryl taught us. Oh no, not Cheryl. Michelle. No, it's Cheryl. Michelle. It's Michelle. But, but my it's fingers it's just don't. They don't want to do, see the, the, the. I don't know. They just don't. They won't. Yeah. They won't do it. <laughs> All right. So let's get started with these leads. Um, and I kind of explain what's going on as we go along. Yep, so you gotta help us out. You got Google. Help Give us! us. A hand. You're only allowed to Google when we tell you you're allowed Why to Google. With Google all the time. Any Gosh. other Googling is cheating and we don't condone it. Alright. No! <laughs> Rex will not help us! No! Okay, so fail. the first thing is going to be on the Antares database, which we already have. Uh, we did that. <laughs> Rex oh, no, is the traitor. <laughs> He's with the, the Ying auction house. Uh, so we already went onto the Antares database and signed up. So um, we just need to use this to look up Kurt 
Blutholtz's police files. Now, I don't remember who Kurt Blutholtz is. He's, He's the... a Nazi that may have stolen the, the watch from the Polish stolen, during yeah. the... The watch was stolen by a Nazi. Nazi. Yeah. Okay. I did not see that coming. So, you might want to write down his name. Okay. He's supposed to be dead. Yeah. Oh, and he's he, long dead. And if he's not dead, then it's very complicated, and the media is going to be like, like oh, there's a living Nazi. I can oh. see uh, Joe's going to be an I important see. tool to this case. Yeah, because I missed a lot <laughs> on that. Yeah. He's a I was, sponge I know, of information. We missed you at the funeral today. Yeah. I was too it busy. Was today. Like, it was nine, today. Not two days. <laughs> you missed it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and type in Kurt Bluthols. Hopefully I spelled that correctly. And search. There it is. So here is his personnel file. Mm -hmm. So his name is Kurt Bluthols. He was born 13111 in Munich. We don't know when he died, but he's five foot eight, round brown, and you can see all of this information there. Oh, he has a per an identifying mark. Paresis of the left hand due to a shrapnel wound, not confirmed, and the tattoo of a spider above the right wrist, which was not confirmed. Mm. So there's a good amount of information in here about him. He was a microbiologist and scientist. He conducted research on biological weapons and transplants. He experimented using sarin to kill prisoners of the concentration camp Auschwitz-Birkenau. Mm -hmm. There's an international arrest warrant for him. His status is unknown. Officially, he's still wanted by the Polish and Russian governments. Good for him. Um... The Polish Bill of Indictment for Nuremberg trial names him as one of the criminals and documents witness testimonies. The bill is over 100 pages long and it contains the most important facts and documents regarding Nazi crimes against the Polish nation. Mm -hmm. This bill was attached to the Soviet Bill of Indictment due to the fact that the Polish delegation could not formally partake in the words of the tribunal since the London Agreement of August 8, 1945 ensured that only the representatives of the four powers seeking, speaking on behalf of all nations were present. So his charges were that he did illegal carrying out of microbiological and chemical tests on Poles imprisoned in Auschwitz concentration camp and the prisoners of Fort 7 from Posen. 137 cases of experiments resulting in death. Active. Hey, Maggerty. Hey, hey, Maggerty. Hey. Hello. I'm going to be seeing you in less than one week. What? <gasps> <laughs> Active participation in... That wasn't creepy at all. Um, <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Hey. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for, for the sub. Six, six months. Sub. We heart you. It's like it's funny. <laughs> right? Um, so he had active participation in a criminal organization, probable connection to Otto Scorzini's organization, Spider. Now you see that symbol that's there? Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like a Wi Fi symbol. Yeah. This symbol right here, uh -huh. that means we can look up what's underlined here. Hyperlink. It's not a hyperlink. Not a hyperlink. That's it's not a hyperlink. It isn't. But you, it means we're allowed to Google that or look it up on the internet in some kind of way. Oh, Google it. No, not we just no. Started. This is the very first lead that we've just gone down. We, um, our goal is. To investigate the events leading up to the watch from Poland ending up in the Ying auction house and discover all stages and find out evidence to confirm them. And anyone can Google this, by the way. Yes. Yep. And give us some Anybody who wants to help us can Google that. Otto Skorzeny's organization, Spider. Let's see. There's uh, stuff on... So, Melissa, if you want to make a note, like an area where you can write down leads that we need to go down, that might be good. So, if you want to make a note about leads, um, the history consultant concerning Kurt, number 115, headquarters. Let's see, there are many organizations. 
Wait, the number 115 headquarters, what does that go over? That's the history consultant concerning Kurt. Or I guess we start calling him KB, Kurt Bluthals. German for the spider, die spin, was a post-World War II organization thought to have helped certain Nazi war criminals escape justice. I think just start story what they're trying to solve. Yep, exactly. Yep. That's all that you missed, Magrady. We're trying to find a watch or something. We're looking for a watch. And one of our co-workers died in a hit and run. Yeah. And there's a funeral in two days. Alright, probably connection to Spider. And we're going, the, but I'm not baking anything for at the, afterwards. The watch was lost during World War II, so... Um, it was a cold case, then. Yeah. But we found the watch. But we're trying to... Yeah, we, we don't we need to watch. figure out how the watch got to the Ying auction house when it was lost for all these years. Mm -hmm. It was bought from a guy named Rupert Owens, which I missed that too. And we're a detective agency, not a not a government agency. Oh. Well, the Rupert Owens guy, he's just the person who just happened to pay $5,000 for it at the auction. He's just yeah. some person. Yeah. All gone from my mind because thanks to you, I got an idea for some quest lines. All right, so you looked at the spider quest organization. Lines. Any interesting information in there? Um, oh, I hit my mind. He was led in part by Otto Skorzeny, which is mentioned yeah. there. Yep. Um, Hitler's commando chief as well as Nazi intelligence officer Reinhard Gellin. It's helped as many as 600 former SS men escape Germany to Spain... Argentina, Paraguay, Chile, Bolivia, the Middle East, and other countries. Uh, so it's just, yeah, it's like a under So under he's under connected under to this group, and he probably got out of Germany by using this spider group. Right. Okay, sounds good. So that was our first lead. So the next lead we have is to look up the file on Rupert Owens, which is also in the database. So unless there's any further comments on that, I'll move on to that. No, let's move on. All right, and then we'll move on to some cards. So this one is gonna be Rupert Owens. So here is Rupert. Oh, and each person is also given a number, if that helps you. KB is number 002. Rupert Owens, this is the guy who uh, sold the watch. I'm oh, sorry, bought the watch. Well, seven. No, the auction house bought the watch for $5,000 from him. Okay. He, oh, so he's the one that had so the watch. we are curious yeah. how he has it. Owens. Rupert Owens. Oh. Rupert Owens. And this is some information about him. Um, oops. Uh, we have his um, fingerprints on file now. So um, if there, if we find other fingerprints, we can try and compare them and see if they were his fingerprints. Let's get criminal record. Mm -hmm. oh. So he was arrested for possession with wow. intent to distribute a controlled Goodness. substance, sentenced to six months in prison. Oh, um, yeah, I should also state that some of the content today might not be appropriate for children. <laughs> What kind of ladies exposed himself? A decent <laughs> like, exposure. Because I saw some cards with some language on it and other stuff, so ah, just FYI. Okay. Um, yeah, well, it looks like he is really into selling the controlled substances. Indecent exposure, breach of peace, um, causing a traffic accident while under the influence, damaging public property, three months of community service, he was fined $2,000 and directed to a mandatory... Treatment for drug and alcohol addiction. That was in 2012. Perfect guy to bring home to your mama. He, we even have his shoe size here. Mm -hmm. Eight and a half. Ooh, that might come in handy if there's footprints. And his weight and everything. And we know who he's related to. His dad and his mom. Marcus Owens and Lily Garrett. And why are they, why do they have to add someone? We can look them up. Oh, okay. Uh, in the database. So Might those those it. could be possible um, <laughs> leads. 
Yeah, well, we warned you. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you watch hard board games. You know yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, so that's two possible leads if you'd like Teaching to make it, Melissa. In at and Marcus world. Owens and at Lily Garrett, which are Rupert's dad and mom. Did you put that on the list of leads? The dad is Willie. What? No. <laughs> Eight so leads. You got all of that? <laughs> all right, so that's all we need from the database right this second. Mm -hmm. We'll come back to it later. So now we're going to move into some cards. So I'm just going to turn the screen off to save battery. So um, the next lead we have is evidence storage. So the way this works is we have a deck of cards here. We're never allowed to look at them until we're for, uh, completely and utterly sure that we want to look at one because it's going to cost us time to do so. But once we take the card out, <laughs> no matter what it says on it, we have to accept that amount of time. So we're like, oh, we only have one hour left today, but I really want to check this card out. We pull it out, it says four hours. Too bad. You just spent four hours and you got three hours of overtime. Mm. So you got to be careful of that. Mm. Each of the locations has um, information in the rule book as to how many hours you are likely to spend in those locations. So we can look at that if need be. It also takes us an hour to travel from each location to any other location. So we would have to move Jeez, this down. Jeez, like, like so it sounds like traffic. busy city. <laughs> an hour to get anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Try to go 10 minutes down the street, taking an hour. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do from headquarters or from anywhere. So you don't always have to move for every single task. Mm. Um, so this one says card number 103. So when you need to look for a car, you just flash the cards like this so you can only see the numbers. Odd way of doing it. Oh. Hmm, what would you prefer? What's on the back? You're not allowed to look at the backs. I know, I was just saying what's on it. Like more uh, more information? Card, Sometimes, yes. Oftentimes, yes. So this card um, can be read. So this is going to cost us one hour, first of all. Mm -hmm. We're at headquarters, so we're going to spend one hour. So that's what this one hour right here says. We're at headquarters, so we're already there, so no issue there on spending time. So now we just need to... Camera? Hmm? You want to put the little camera? Like the oh, we can do that. Yeah. I take a... Second of, yeah. we'll aim the camera down. And this card is completely blank. It's, <laughs> wow, it's a blank card. You're wasting that. That's how we do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me a second. I got that. Wait, is supposed to be words on this? Yeah, there's words on it. And here they are now. It's invisible ink. Ah, oh, it's become visible. Yep. There we go. So that's what it looks like. Well, who's reading it? Not me. Um, well, how You're about closest you, to the screen because I have trouble seeing the words from oh, okay. And terrorist evidence storage is a huge hangar back from when the police station was still <laughs> located here. I got a big pull in my way. Oh. Um, the police station was moved and the evidence storage stayed. Hey, if you, if you would prefer, I can just, we can just give you the card and we can go back to the other camera. That's fine. Uh, the agency pumped a ton of money into it. Added a second hall, automated it as much as was possible, and rigged everything with the Antares computer system. You log into the system, enter the ID number, case number, and verification code. Then immediately go to the virtual evidence storage. There are two items attached to the case. In the picture next to the watch, there's also a cigar box. Ooh, a cigar box. Like that. The watch Just must have been kept in inside of it. Where did it come from? Interesting. Oh. It's time to collect both of the items personally. The system informs you that you can collect both of them within 37 minutes from box 28 in section two of the magazine. You chose the SMS confirmation and after a while you get a barcode to open the box. You log out of the system and quickly go Grab a bite 
at the Antares Cafeteria lunch. <laughs> he read that before it started. <laughs> a great salad, coffee, and a bottle of water. You go to evidence storage. You better put that under lunch. Great right. salad, coffee, bottle yeah. of water. Check. Got my lunch. No, but write what you have for lunch. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> you got to log so, in the calorie counter. <laughs> yeah. One of the things the rule book and other things I watched um, said about this is to don't like go too fast from card to card make sure at, at each card that you like really understand oh. what it's trying to tell you because you know could be some vital information there greek salad not that <laughs> so it's the watch and the cigar box cigar box cigar box yeah cigar box <laughs> so the watch was kept inside the cigar box that's box 28 we might be. We might need to find out where did the box, where did the cigar box come from. That seems like an interesting question. Hmm. It says the police station was moved and the evidence storage stayed. That seems more like maybe in the shuffle of like moving and staying. Might have been. My gosh, I hope it's not like something from within. So we're not allowed to. Um, look at the back of this card unless it told us to. Mm. Um, this one just tells us to read number 121. So we have two different kinds of cards over here. Um, on this side will be cards that we didn't look at the back of and on this side will be cards we did look at the back of because later we'll need to remember yeah, there's nothing on the back of this card, by the way, if you're curious. Um, but just for the record, um, later we'll have the option to look at cards or not. And depending on our choices, we'll want to put these in the different stacks. This side we can only look at the front of. This side we can go back and look at both sides. So, number 121. 121. There's a watch. That's a watch. Watch what happens. So we're still at headquarters. This one does not have any time on it. It's just the watch. So this shows us a lot about it. Estimated value of $25,000. It has some scratches and a slight dent at the hinges of the envelope. Um, 94 grams. Two and a half inches. Oh, this is interesting. A crack halfway from two o'clock. Porcelain dial. Um, broken mechanism, spring type, Swiss. Inscription on the lid God, honor, and homeland in Polish. Mm. Could be important. Yeah. And then we have this picture down here, which is sh this um, image means we can flip the card over for free. Okay. And read the back. Sometimes you'll see like this and a flipping symbol, which means I would have to spend this to flip it over. Ah. Okay. Well, so you done taking notes on it? Uh, this card stays with us, right? It does. Okay. It just might be we uh, m the, an average person goes through twenty cards to solve the case. We will not go through all those cards. And it may be difficult to find that little piece of information we were looking for in all of these walls of text. Right, right. If there was just one vital piece of information. So it's good. Everywhere I looked said write stuff down. The more you write down, the better you're going to have a chance yeah. of winning. For your mind map. Right. I got lunch here. Sweet. <laughs> if only you could connect it to Can I turn it over now? <laughs> Maybe a mid-afternoon snack. Eleven Elevensies. Second breakfast. Second breakfast. Mm, <laughs> scratches like that on hitch. All right. So this is our cigar box. It's almost worth as much as the watch. Um, Fifteen bucks, little man. Yep. It's the nineteen forties. Duke's de Cressy. Yeah.
mechanoscopic expertise. From the cotton wool and corners of the box, a series of micro traces of dirt and dust particles have been collected. Takes the crescent. Hmm. Lined with cotton apothecary. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We have some more leads here down at the bottom. So this tells us other leads we can go down once we've kind of got our initial sweep. This is one we can go back to here, which is to go to the lab and examine them and look for um, prints. Interesting. So you might want to write next to that, like, prints. It's a box, but it only gives two dimensions. So we don't know how tall it is. True. Good eye. <laughs> no, it's six inches tall. And how wide is it? We don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. So our next um, lead, we went to um, evidence storage, which was 103. So now the next thing it tells us to try is interrogating Rupert Owens, which he's also at headquarters, number 108. Rupert. Ooh, it's going to take a while. He just seemed like a talker. Does he? I said this is going to take a while. He doesn't. Oh, he doesn't seem like You're right. There sure is. Well, Melissa was correct. We've got a note here that this one is going to take us three hours. It takes a long time to so, try to get some one, two, three. information out of sky. It says, Owens is already waiting outside the conference room. He refuses to start the interrogation without his lawyer present. The lawyer arrives late and gives you the business card of Weber and Son for some reason. You invite them inside. They both seem to be extremely agitated. You plug the laptop into the room system and log onto your account. You turn on the interrogation mode and the first of the screens that takes up the entire wall turns on. There are several pop-up windows, the largest of which is a stream from the camera. Another is vibrating with the audio amplitude and the third one is full of text. You point at the screen. I inform you that our meeting is being recorded. Additionally, our system will prepare a transcript of the meeting. You switch the K screen and post the image from your laptop to the second screen. On the wall magnified a hundredfold is Owen's p police file and the mugshots from his arrest. You skip over a dozen documents on him. Horrified, Owen shrinks in his chair. Finally, a photo of the golden watch appears on the screen. Okay, you say, looking carefully at Owens. Could you please explain how you found yourself in the possession of a watch that was stolen from Poland during World War II? Re-questioning at 108. Okay, so that questioning at 108 is back to the database. So, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Over here, we can go to questioning. And we can type in um, 108. And this is the interview that we had with him. Hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> the screen shows you sometimes this MSL. You see that right after Marcus? Yeah. Down here. That means it was a medium stress level. And then down here you see LSL. Right. That's low stress level. You might also see HSL, which is high stress level. Okay. So um, the game, uh, the the Antares system is good at telling whether people basically are lying or not. Uh, so that it's kind of giving you some indication of whether they thought, whether it thinks they were lying or not. So he said the watch must have been my father's. Yeah, the watch must have been my father's, Marcus. I found it more or less a month ago when I was tearing through the old house under the porch. I was pulling away the floorboards when I saw something underneath. It was an old metal can. 
and inside there was a box. In that box, I found a watch. I got excited and thought it would solve my financial problems. I googled someone who dealt with this kind of stuff, asked around a bit, and just went to sell it. I have no idea where my old man got that watch. See, I was still a kid when that person left me and my mom. I remember being so happy. It was actually a blessing. My old man was a horrible person. He beat mom. His friends weren't any better. He always was a coward. You know, the type that is always in the shadow of someone bigger. The type that sucks up to people like, like, oh, I got it. Like Frito Corleone. Frito Corleone? Sounds like the Godfather, right? I can't remember any of his friends' names, though. They were never at the house. Always at a bar, drunk. I do recall one of them had a scar on his face, as if someone put a cigar out on it. He was as short as my pops. I think he also had dark hair. They were always drinking together and did some business. Dark alley crooks, all of them. That's all I remember. It was a long time ago. The evening before his arrest, he came home wasted. I remember that because we were airing the Mariner 5 launch then. We all wanted to be astronauts in those days. He started yelling at my mother, then suddenly gave her a pendant and some money. As an apology, I guess. Then he pretended to go work on the porch. I think he left before midnight. I didn't want to see that guy ever again. I have no idea who snuffed him in jail, and I don't care. He deserved it. I think it was right before that that he sent a letter to Mom about needing something. He said there was something big happening. He could make a lot of money. Mom was so upset she burned the letter. The years after his death were good until Mom died when I was 20. It hit me real hard, and I went down a slippery slope. I ended up behind bars. I don't know what he was talking about in that letter. The cops didn't even ask about it. They might have spoken about it with mom at the police station. That's all I know. Hmm. Hmm. So there's Frito Corleone with a scar on his face and dark hair. Um, the scar and the dark hair is someone else. Oh, someone One of the dad's friends. And he also said that guy was as short as his dad is. So he's going to be the same height as Marcus Owens, right? Marcus is the dad. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. And it's specifically that the, the shape of the scar is like a cigar. Like that cigar box. That's right. Good connection there. Yeah. Wait, we're doing Where's the box? What? There's more than one cigar? Oh no, there was a cigar box and he has no, a No, that's the cigar. only cigar in the world. Yeah, but like he got, got somebody wanted to take the watch. It's like, shh. So he got box. upset when he talked about his dad and he got upset, more upset when he talked about Fredo. Mm-hmm. Maybe he didn't like the movie. But his mother was a little bit less stressful. And the launch of the Mariner 5, which somebody can Google that. June 14th, 1967. So that was the day he gave the watch, gave the watch to his mom. Might be important. This is the date the... No, that's when he, that's, he buried it under the porch. He gave his mother a pendant and something else. Oh. Uh, he started yelling, then he gave her a pendant and some money. Some money, yeah. Then he pretended to go work on the porch. He pretended to work on the porch. I think he might have just lifted up the boards and put something and hid that, maybe? Oh. Uh, so is the pendant the same thing as the... The pendant's like a... Is a pendant. I guess. I mean, we haven't we haven't run into a pendant until now. So the day he hid the watch is July fourteenth, nineteen sixty-seven. The day Marcus hit the watch. And then we have a lead here, which leads us to um, 
Marcus Owens, which I think we already have that, right? Mm -hmm. Marcus Owens. Yep. So that's the interview with Rupert. So back to this card over here. Um, you can see down here it says press Owens further. We can spend, we actually have one of these. It was for me. We could spin that to flip this over. Are these rare? Um, like, will we can get be, more of these? Can be. Um, Melissa, you might want to also notice another lead we have here. Information on Weber & Son, which is the lawyer company that he hired. Number 120. Um... The each of us has a special ability, by the way, on our card. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. spend a star from the token pool to remove one X from another investigator. Yeah, and I can spend one from the token pool to change a skill token of any type into a jester. Make it wild. What? What? What is that token? That's the jester. Okay. Are you drawing a Greek salad and a bottle of water? Yeah, I'm wondering if I had olives on it. Oh, olives? <laughs> uh, when investigators take, write a report action, add two stars to the token pool instead of one. Yeah, so there is an action we can take in this game, which is writing writing a report or whatever you just now said. Actually, write a report. Yeah, it's, it's listed on here somewhere. Write a report. Um, once per day, you can spend one of your working hours to write a report, and it'll give you another star. Mm. Um, but you can't do it during overtime. But your ability gives, makes it turns into two stars. Culture. Um, the abilities can only each be used uh, one time per day. Once you've used it, you put one of those X's on your thing. So she can remove those X's. Where's the X's? Right in front of you. Oh, in here. Okay. That's Basil of Baker Street. The great mouse detective. Mm. So that um, comes down to a decision of whether we want to press Owens further or not. It's a bug. I don't know. It's been bugged. Uh, kill it. Slay it. Um, Good job. I don't think I got it. I don't think you did. <laughs> We have only one chance at this. Over here. If we pass on this, we can oh, never. No, didn't get him. He landed, but I didn't get him. Mm. <laughs> can we, we can't come back without spending more time, probably. We can never come back and change our mind on this. Press him. If we don't press him right now, we can never press him. Press him. Period. It was my thing. I say press him. All right. If well, we can never come back, what if he has some vital information? What about the next guy that needs pressing? Yeah, what if the next guy is even worse? Well, if the next guy just has his mouth shut and doesn't say a word and requires the pressing. Mm. Who's the next guy? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we don't have how the next often guy. do we his get these father. things? How do uh, we get them? His father's dead. He died in jail. Well, the mother is the only one. The psychic that, detective. The mother is the only one. And you're going <laughs> like, how often will we get these things? <laughs> have you lost? Well, like, I can spend one of these touch to turn it into so a while. You press an old lady? Yes. <laughs> But then how often do we get the stars? What else, you what can else spend do we an hour we get a day what to else get, can we get one. Yeah, true. What else does What else do, do we need? I mean, he says he found it at the old house. He's Unless like, he wants to tell us why he's in financial problems. But that may not be relevant to the case, right? Yeah. He wasn't very stressed about anything. It wasn't stress? Medium stress. He's more stressed. So he's kind of telling the truth. He's more stressed Maybe. with his dad and uh, yeah. Fredo. Hmm. Probably I don't know. If Melissa two. seemed very certain that we should press this guy. But if there's like three of y'all saying maybe we shouldn't, then like I'm not saying being, anything. I'm being out. Vote on that because well, we, can, we can't hear the deciding vote. How, how do we get another two one? versus one? I am not a deciding vote. We can turn sure this. Are. Can we, can we, <laughs> That's not how math works. We can turn this one of these into one later if we need to, right? Yep. I say we use it. That's just my gut. I don't know. Well, uh, well, I guess for just all the right. purposes of... All right, D, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, GG, should we press him or 
Has he given us all he can give? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. All right, who's going to be the bad cop? She is, she is obviously. obviously. Yeah. Look at look at this face. This this is this is mean Mama Gemma face right here. I mean, look at that face. Oh, going there. Yeah, tell me some more. I need to know more information. <laughs> yep. See. So you want to do it? Cheers to spend. Uh, no, he was, he was only medium and low, so it might be all. Yeah. All right. I will sign with my, I'll call my jets. Mag Magadji came in, he was a good cop, like, come on now, just chill. Let's just cool it. I'll uh -huh. cool my jets. Just... Detective right. Magadji. Can we look <laughs> up? Detective Magadji. We should probably look up the dad and the mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we have those all on lists of our and leads Fredo. to follow. Fredo we don't have a way of movie, looking right? up Fredo yet. Oh, no. That's just the character from the movie. Godfather. Yeah, but he's like a weak character in the movie. All right, we have two more things we need to do before we start going down our paths of different leads, which is interrogate the auction house owners, 119 at field work. I don't think it's anything about the game. I think it's just they're trying to capture that what would oh, you do that's situation. Right. Okay. What's this oh. kind of just figuring out a story. Three okay. hours. Well, this game just like really messed us up because it told us to do all of those things on that sheet. That costs one hour, and then it costs three hours to be here. One, two, three. So we're in overtime. overtime. We get one of those. How do we get rid of that? You can't. Shh. But the game told us to do that. So I don't really understand. <sighs> All right, let's see. The auction house is relatively close, although the radio has announced that all of Richmond is completely congested. You manage to avoid the traffic jams. The office is located in an old building. Once there, you find an elderly couple. They have been married for 50 years and are in the same business the whole time. Mrs. Ying offers you cookies, while Mr. Ying pours some everyone a shot of brandy. They both came here from China as kids and earned everything they have on their own. Mr. Ying testifies that they offered Owens much more for the watch, provided that he would give them some time to get an expert opinion and find funds. The seller was not interested. He wanted money right away in cash. They gave him everything they had on hand. They notified the police themselves when they discovered what they came across. Hmm. So you can, now you can push the yings further if you don't believe the old elderly couple. They got something to hide. Hey. He poured everybody a shot of brandy and she's giving out cookies. Hey. I happen to agree. Yeah, they're they hiding something. They do seem something. a little bit suspicious. <laughs> Who gives out a bunch of brandy shots? Really? With cookies? Where's the tea? Mm -hmm. Shenanigans. Wow. <laughs> well, tea with my this cookies. Is, this is why we have a problem now with your approach to the immigrants here. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just they didn't do the right thing. They need to have tea with the cookies. Why brandy? It just seems sketchy. Really nice. Maybe they're alcoholics. <laughs> And this, what time of day is this? Yeah, we it's have time for daytime. Day, he's all right. It's yeah. 5 p.m. Okay, okay, it's 5 o'clock. Good. All right. This <laughs> but we could have come here morning. It's The card reads the same. Yeah. Uh, would have been a good start to the day. Why yeah. would they give just some random person, a seller, every bit of cash they have on hand? Just give them everything and then call them. For a people. watch. And they didn't even know the significance of the watch they claim at the time. Yeah, so. and like they didn't have an expert opinion on it and they just gave it to the police. For, it's like, uh, it seems sketchy. Like, why? Why would they just empty out their you know, money? Lay into them then. Get in there. Yep. This seems like a bad choice, but let's do it. <laughs> do it. Here, Melissa, this is all you. Me. Put that up there. Cashed in. They've been running this business for so many years that they have to know something. 
they just bought a precious gold watch from the street bum, yeah. and only after they got scared did they report it. Didn't it seem suspicious from the start? You point out to them that their story has some holes. They wanted easy money, and they started thinking post facto. After a while, Mr. Ying admits that that's exactly how it was. Oh. And regrets his decision on the purchase. From the beginning, he suspected that Owens had stolen the watch. In his defense, Ying says, someone from the local press visited them sniffing around the, the story. Probably some journalist that got tipped off by someone from the precinct where they reported it's the, the case. First one. This is uh, Hi, it's case number one. Case number one. We just started about, we're about an hour into it. Yes, but for the sake of the investigation, Ying did not want to talk to him. Delaware was right. In the end, the case will come to light. But you still have to be careful about who knows what. You make them promise that they will not speak to the press so that at least one uh, way for the scandal to well, leak is prevented. How did you not get this? How have you not this, gotten this far yet? This is the second card. They, they, <laughs> they started with them right there and they gave him the brandy. Uh, they were just like, oh, let's call it a day. Uh, we're done. We're not. <laughs> yeah, one brandy and then two. Ooh, so they did know something. He admits it. He knew it. See, I was right about that, Mr. Ying and his brandy. He needed to give out tea. Had he just given tea with What'd those you cookies? Learn? That somebody from the press, there's somebody in the press going through the precinct that is tipping got things tipped off. off yeah, from someone got from the off. precinct. Mm -hmm. So we gotta, we gotta find a press person. We gotta find this press person that leaked the story. Melissa is gonna be like nonstop wanting to pursue this because she feels like this is the most important piece of information because she spent her token. What, who's like, <laughs> yeah. the thing? Yep, I want to find out who linked to the press. Well, now it makes me wonder why, why, what's his name was selling it? Well, he had financial problems. Yeah, yeah but why? Yeah, he needed the money. Uh, why why did he is Because maybe now he might have stolen it and the rest of the story might be... Hmm. What to look up his mother. Yep. Well, we need to um, end our day, right? Because otherwise, we're going to get more. Um, Jeez, problems. they sure they sure do uh, think that you're going to work a lot of overtime. Got more overtime hours than daytime mm -hmm. hours, than like regular hours. Yeah. Push jobs. So to end the day, we're going to move the day tracker to day number two. Slide this back up to eight. Move the IT marker back to headquarters. Um, remove all our usability tokens. Oh, did we want to spend any on last yesterday? I guess not. Sort the notes and discuss what you've learned of the day. Write down all possible leads to keep track of what is available to you. All right, so um, we're on day two. The rule book recommends in between each day Getting up, stretching your legs, having a cookie, etc. Et oh, et I want a cookie. Where are the cookies? You have cookies? I have Jamie Dodgers. We have uh, like three meeple cookies. Yeah, there's three over. meeple cookies left if you want a meeple cookie. What's your evidence? All right. The only <laughs> other thing we have is the funeral, which is tomorrow. So we can um, do that on tomorrow. But for today, we have leads, and Melissa's been taking a note about all of the leads we have. So far, leads, we have the history consultant concerning the K KB guy. Then we have the, the mom and the dad of Rupert. We have the lab for the prince. And then the headquarters for the Weber and Son. The, the thing he gave the business, the attorneys, yeah, the business card. All right, well, y'all want to look up dad and mom right quick? Sure, yeah. let's do it. All right, dad is right here. Here's Dad, 006. Dad. Born 1930 in Richmond, Virginia. Can I look at the Rupert card? Died young. Uh, there isn't a Rupert card. There's a Rupert card. No. What do you mean his... What do you mean? Oh, he was up there. Yeah. We can go back to him. He was stabbed. In jail. At age 38. 
in jail. Man, that's a hard looking And he was five foot six, so that tells you how tall that other guy is. Remember the one with the scar? I the you might want to write down that he's also five foot six. We've got his blood type. We've got a cat going perilously close to my legs. What's the blood type? Yeah, that blood type. Weird. Zero RH plus. Type O? Something? It looks like a C from here. A little positive or something like that. Um, I'm going to add his oh, yeah, uh, fingerprints to our listing here. What was the name for the dad? Marcus. Marcus, Marcus oh. Owens. Yep. She goes. All right, so he is also concealed, buy and received, stolen goods, find and released. He did a shootout and was charged to, with failure to obey a police order. And there's the hearing ID, if we need to look that up. I don't know how we look that up. It doesn't say anything. That's the hearing ID. He was suspected of being an accomplice to a robbery, and there's a case file number here. Charges dropped. He was put in eight years in prison with possibility of applying for parole after three for being an accomplice to car theft, handling stolen goods, um, resisting arrest, and failure to obey police. While in prison, he wanted to cooperate with the police prosecutor's office. However, he was found dead before he could share any what? information. <gasps> what was, Ooh, what was the dead. date of right the Mariner launch? Spill beans. What was the date of the Mariner launch? Sixty-seven. Six, June fourteenth, nineteen sixty-seven. Look at that. On June fifteenth, nineteen sixty-seven, he was arrested for after Ooh. a shootout. Yeah, yeah, and, then, and then the robbery. The robbery was the, that was the day of the case, right there. Is that right? June twenty-fourth, nineteen sixty-seven. Insufficient evidence. Yeah. So he may have robbed somebody to get the lunch. Yeah, the dad. Uh, I he's, think it's very. Um, he's very buried suspicious. at Oakwood Cemetery. Oh, we can. Uh, here's a lead for our lead list. Get the incident data on the robbery number. It's card number 105. Richmond PD. We'd have to drive over to Richmond PD to do that. We better just take care of that when we're there for the funeral. And go up to, um... Valid. When did, true. When did he start serving and how long into it was it before he was killed? After three years, it says. Uh... I find it very suspicious that he was... He was killed fixing. in 1968. That was a year after he went. Mm -hmm. He was fixing to spill beans. Mm-hmm. And then got stabbed. Because mm -hmm. it's like and he's fixing to... Yeah, he's about to, to... Tell. Yeah. Cooperate. Somebody knew something from the we inside. We also have his shoe size. Okay. What's his shoe size? Nine. Nine. Well, Rupert had eight and a half. I don't know if it's useful, but... We'll look at Mom? Yes. Here she is, Lily Garrett. She died age 45 and 79 from diabetes. Age 49? 5, 45. And 79. So she's and dead. 79, yeah. And she has an AB blood type. And the dad had an O type. I don't know why they give him the blood types. Maybe they, they are blood samples. Well, can you match? Can you mix those two together to get? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's what I was. Well, saying. we don't have his blood type. Oh, we have. Oh, we had. We had the the Nazis. Yeah, we don't know his mm. blood type. So that's all there really is about mom. Not much here about her. She died from diabetes at forty-five, and back in seventy-nine, the year after. So he said, oh, we had some real good time after that. It was really just like a year. Because like he died in 78, correct? You had a good time in a year. Yeah, he's like, oh, it's a good time. So then mom died and I was 20. I was like, 
Oh, good time watching her good. suffer. Yes. That's not good. All right, what other leads do we have? Uh, they have the lab. At headquarters. Oh, at headquarters we have the Weber and Son. All right. Anyone opposed to checking out Weber and Sons? Nope. Nope. Oh, it's gonna have a time. It's gonna have a time thing on it. The other option would be the history consultant. I see you have there. Yeah, the history consultant. Can, sorry, that's one fifteen. They're both cards, so they're both gonna have to take time. The rule book says. Headquarters is usually one to two hours. Richmond PD is usually two to three hours. The lab is up to four hours, and field work is at least two hours. Let's go Do we, to that history should, result, I suppose. Should we get fingerprints off the? Um, the fingerprints. That's the lab. That was. We'd have to go to the lab to do that. You want to? You, I thought we, we no, thought we might, would finish it, all our headquarters stuff it first. Might, it might leave. be better to find more people in case we need to do the history consultant. Okay. History consultant number one fifteen. Two hours. Dink dink. Brubenbeck arrives out of breath and with a whole portfolio of documents under his arm. He is drenched from head to toe due to the heavy rain which has been slashing the windows of Antares headquarters from early morning and causing traffic jams throughout the whole city. It was a miracle that he protected the documents from the downpour. He ran from the parking lot, holding the briefcase under the umbrella. He asked for a cup of hot coffee and a towel. A soggy coat and hat land on a chair. He says, that you have to hurry because in two hours he must return to the university. You prepare two coffees. Their cheap aroma spreads over the room and follows you to the top floor. Instead of sitting with the professor in one of the conference rooms on your floor, you take him to a small cramped room at the end of the corridor, a secret hiding place known only to a few people from the department. You wink at Brubenbeck, pull out a pack of cigarettes, and put an ashtray on the table. Brubenbeck smiles and takes out a small box of tobacco from his pipe. He sips his coffee and begins to talk about Bluthold's story while he prepares his smoke. Ooh. Read number 116. I'm guessing there's something on the back of here. Yeah, so when you see that, you yeah. just know it's just a blank back. Uh, okay. All right. Brubenbeck. <clears throat> there is not much about Bluthot in our files. He graduated with honors from the Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich in the medical department. From 1935, he belonged to the NSDAP. On April 24, 1942, the Society of the Emperor Frederick in Berlin appointed the Central Research Institute and named him as the director of the institute, a young, ambitious, and very capable member of the Nazi party the ideal candidate. A year later, in 1943, he was sent to a German-occupied Posen, where he was employed as the head of the Cancer Statistics Department, a fictional moniker that was supposed to camouflage the basic goal of the Institute, Advanced Research in Transplantology. We do not have much information from this period. One can only guess what atrocities were done under the guise of research. The last piece of information we have about him is that he fled south to Austria after the war under the fictitious name of Buckman. Hmm. I suspect that he went to Italy and then just dissolved into thin air like many other criminals who traveled in that direction. The German criminals generally bribed soldiers to guarantee their passage across the border. They paid with stolen pre-war jewelry, gold, and anything else of value. Then they disappeared. A lot of information here. Yeah, it's related to what we Googled earlier with the getting the German soldiers out. We can spend a token to learn more about the spider organization. You already Googled it. Yeah. Well, we see where he might have had the watch and then gave it away to get out. 
fair. Yeah. Yeah, they stole. They paid with um, jewelry, gold, and anything else of value. Like that watches. seems important. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. All right. His his fake name of Buckman and the fact that he fled south to Austria seem important. Yeah, I don't think we need to press this. Uh -huh. What do you say? Oh, hard lady. <laughs> he's hiding something. Yep. I want to he's on our side. <laughs> no, we already read about the stuff on Google, so really, right. what, what more we can we find out that's not on the Google, so. All right. What other leads we have? All right, at the headquarters, we could do the Weber and Son, card so 120. So that's his... Um, the attorneys. The attorneys. Do we want to find out about the attorneys, or are we more interested in like rolling out and doing something else? Uh, probably don't need to know about the attorney. Maybe the lab. That's going to take a while. Up to four hours, it said. But it's better to do it now in the middle of the day than at the end of the day when it's yeah. going to put us into overtime. I say well, we do wait, the lab right now. That's the how is, how is, what's his name, paying for an attorney if he is having money problems? Mm. Valid. We really plus, should have. We should. We should have pressed him. And plus, he was. We shouldn't have pressed the young people. We should have pressed the other. People. And he was. Um, and he was. They said the attorney was also. The attorney was late and also very vexed, right? What a mess. Um, we're solving a case. Not really. Um, we had coffee and cigarettes with a professor. Yeah. yeah. We, the uh, history consultant. We just had yeah coffee and cigarettes with the history consultant in a secret private room. But not many people know. Right. Like, why do you want to so. bring it to the secret prior room? Um, we haven't found out much uh, yet. We found out that the the Ying man, he made a mistake. He he Ying knew man. what he was doing, and then he got scared, so we called the police. There's someone in the press poking around. Yeah, there's someone in the press that's like poking around, trying to find stuff. We gotta find that press guy. However, we do that. And, oh, we found out some information about the dad of Rupert, Marcus Owens, and the mom, like when they died and, like, arrest dates and mm. how they were killed and all that. Or died, so. Sugar killed one of them. Yep. Yeah, all right, should we go check out the prince? Or the artist formerly known as? Right, yep, I say the prince. 102. Sure. Back to the lab. So spend one hour to go there. And then what number is it, Melissa? 102. Three hours. One, two, three. Oh, that's not bad. It's been pouring rain for an hour already. The city is still. You take the back streets to avoid the most congested part of the city center. You scan your ID at the entrance. The computer welcomes you and invites you inside. You take the elevator to the eighth floor, walk through a glass door, and enter a clean world of the white lab. Okay, so it's eight You floor. log into the lab bench. Give the signatures of the evidence materials. Tick off the range of research you need. Add a high priority procedure and wait for the technician. After a while, in comes a young girl. She puts the watch and the cigar box into separate containers and secures them. The screen, with your request, turns blue. Data accepted for analysis. Notification of status and the access code will be sent by email. Email. The young, the girl leaves. Email. You have some extra time. You take the elevator to the information center on the third floor. You grab coffee and a sandwich. Then you sit with a laptop at one of the free desks. Reports, email, Wikipedia, and reading up on old Polish watches. Finally, you get the notification. They're done with the analysis. You go back to the eighth floor. You log in, input the access code. You have your results. We're on uh, day two, actually. Mm-hmm. All right, cigar box analysis results. Evidence. Fingerprints on the top of the cigar box. Clear fingerprints of both hands. I need to put this information in. We have a new SD, you said? Yeah, SD, ASF, 
ASF FGH dash eight eight seven six YU. Why not me? Why you? Why not me? Why you? So I need to put a description in here for that. What is this? So fingerprints on the top of the cigar box. Yeah. Clear fingerprints of both hands. Yeah, Mortal was rough. He did not fare well. What does it say? Okay. Fingerprints of Rupert Owens? It's a 92% match to Rupert Owens. Okay, what else do we have? All right, then they have evidence of fingerprints inside the cigar box. Old, well-preserved, a clear thumbprint and fingers of the left hand. SD is FJE D84 dash KLM DF6. KLM DF6? Mm -hmm. So this is fingerprints inside, inside cigar box. Oh, there are 92% mm, more. Those marks. are Marcus Owens' fingerprints. So, outside, so the outside they say probably is Rupert, 92%, but then inside, yeah, I would say this is spoiler Marcus. full. Yes, very spoilery. If you plan on playing yes. it, you will have solved it, I guess. If, uh, you know, you watch us do it. Yeah. But you can also play along if you don't plan on it. And tell us things we're missing. Because really, mostly spoken out loud, I feel like. All right, so evidence. A sample of soil from the cigar box. It contains particles of... Um, what is that? Sherzonum? It's kind of like, um... With elements of peat. That chronicles enriched of Enriched with chemical agents for plant... Sherlock breeding. Holmes, stuff like that. So, soil sample. AJT... AJTU98? A 9B? AJTU98-BNYU68. Okay, we've got that. That's a material. All right, and then evidence of fingerprints inside the cigar box. Old, numerous, but partially oh, okay. worn off. Yeah, if you plan on playing it, um, for sure. <laughs> YU3456. Bye-bye. Right, thank Bye. you. Bye. Dash BHUY86. And this is inside the cigar box. Old, numerous, partially worn off. Hey, Berza. Yeah, this hey, game's Berza. full of spoilers, so if you plan on playing it. Hey. Makes sense. Let's stop. Just, thanks for stopping by. So, why is there growth chemical in the box if it was under the porch? A growth, growth chemical? chemical? This is a, the chemical, the, the, the third clue we just got was a chemical. Yeah. Oh. For plant breeding. Chemical agents for plant, plant breeding. Yeah, why would, like, what do you need that for inside a box with a watch under a porch? Thing. I don't understand how to even use this thing. So, what we just did, it says fingerprints inside the box matched to a Horatio Dawson. Mm -hmm. Which is someone we can search. Yeah. Hmm. Horatio Dawson is 004.
Uh, this must be the run. accomplice, yeah. Yeah. The accomplice, the friend, maybe the short dude. He's, no, he's six foot. He's six oh, foot. Yeah. He has an irregular scar under his shoulder blade, a scar on his neck from a cut, and a military tattoo, a pyramid with the motto, Seven Steps to Hell. Someone can look that up. He tried to attack Colonel Samuel J. Brown. Oh, and police file, 1967-624-MI. That's that same police file. That's number 105 on our list. Oh, yeah. Number 105 for Jimmy P.E. Yeah, so he was murdered during that robbery. This guy. Oh. His fingerprint is inside the box. Maybe that's who he stole the, it from? The 7th United States Army. The 7th, Uni 7th Army was... Was the United States Army created during World War II? Then and it says their veterans wore a tab reading Seven Steps to Hell and they have a pyramid patch. Mm -hmm. Notable commanders George S. Patton. What are you doing? <laughs> she didn't care if I used this. No. But if I was to stick my hand over there, she'd be. <laughs> Yeah, it's a 92% match for him on the uh, inside of the cigar box. Hmm. Pretty good. So, uh, we have some leads here. Oh, he leads, leads. Yeah. Um, his personal file. So, his name is um, Horatio Dawson. He was the accomplice at the murder. He, um, we can go to headquarters, number 113, to look at his military personnel files and veterans files. Mm. Like this. What's happening right now? I thought... The Dawson. Okay. Who's Samuel Brown? Don't know that yet. Alright, so 113 headquarters ratio Dawson. That's who we found. We still have. Alright, I'm going to click on Samuel Brown and see who he is. Sammy Brown. 003. He died in the 80s in a car accident. He has a scar on his right arm. He was an army colonel charged with fraud, corruption, and falsifying reports, but then found not guilty by court martial. Um, previously, it was thought that he died in 1992. The error was later corrected after the file was synchronized with the coroner's data. Hmm. Weird. That is weird. Why did they tell us that? Yeah. Because he's KB. He's KB? Oh. oh. Is he? Do, can we look up KB? Can't. What do you mean, look up KB? Oh, what's the Boot the guy, Carl Bluthold. Can I go back? I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, there's something about the blood type. <laughs> uh, and so, I think, I mean, the, 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 maybe they give you extraneous information? I don't know. But there's something weird about him, right? Plus, he was much older. He said 1912, mm -hmm. he was born in KB, was 1911? Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. We just want to see if the pictures are similar. Well, I would see if there's other traits that were similar, like height or something like that. Yeah. But he was also, but what it said, he was, he was falsifying documents. Is that right? Yeah, falsifying reports in '46. That okay. makes sense. So either, so he may not be him, but maybe be someone that that would have let KB escape. Right. 
so he may have said he had to watch. Oh, uh, trade. He got the watch. He got the watch, and then what's his name? The Owens and the I can't think of the other guy's name. Dawson. Why is he? How is he tied to Dawson? For all of the leads we've had so far. And have you marked which ones we've already done? So we've done these. Are, we've we've done the lab. We've done the consultant. We've done Marcus and Lily. So we still have. We can do the the Horatio Dawson at headquarters, the Richmond PD, and then the Webster and Son. All right, so we're done with Samuel Samuel Brown. How, how do how do we know that he, why he was um, how was he connected to the, the Dawson? The Dawson. Right, wait, there you guys go back. Go right. It says. Oh, he tried this. So this guy tried to assault him. Mm -hmm. But the guy he charged he dropped charges. So Horatio tried to assault Samuel Brown in 67 but Samuel Brown dropped the charges and then two months later he was killed during a robbery hmm. so it's pretty clear he's the accomplice to the robbery yeah we still don't know a lot about that why robbery did, why did he assault Brown we don't know that is it because he recognized him as Why would he assault him? How was he? He was 25, so he would have been old enough to be in World War II, right? 19, he was born in Yeah. Someone looked up the Seven Steps to Hell? Yeah, that was the Seventh Army of the United States that they had a, a, a patch with a pyramid on it that said Seven Steps to Hell. So our card here says we can continue on and try to flip this card over by using our little computer token to see if that's all the traces. But first we need to read card 107. Oh, it says it served in North Africa and Italy in the Mediterranean theater operations. In France and Germany in the European theater between 42 and 45. We've got some more... Um, Prints from the watch. So if he was in that army, he would have been in Germany in 45. Hmm. Okay, so more prints. The more prints. Fingerprints on the watch. Old, well preserved, a clear fingerprint of the left ring finger. Matching evidence. The gold watch belonged to Marcus Owens at some point. Who's Marcus Owens? That's the dad. The dad. Well, I think we knew that. So we've got fingerprints inside the cigar box, and we've got um, his personnel fingerprints, and on the watch. Uh, so that one is um, well preserved, clear fingerprint of a left ring finger. So, then fingerprints we on know the watch for us to clear that Marcus it. Owens, the dad, had the watch. So, let's go to the next one. This is fresh, clear fingerprint. Oh, it's fresh. That's got to be A S F F G H. That's got to be Rupert. Seven eight seven six Y U. Fresh. Clear finger print from watch. So that's Rupert Owens, which is our seller. Okay, the fingerprints on the watch old and damaged, uh, faulty fingerprints. Yeah, so when it has those X's in it like that, it means that some of the information is missing. Mm. 
So, um, but we can still put it in and it'll tell us if anything matches. Old watch. Hey, Buzzy Logic. Hey, Buzzy Logic. I'm taking notes. <laughs> you having fun? I feel like I'm back in school already. <laughs> I'm taking notes. So we. Um, it's different. I'll say that. It's like an escape room almost that in and it does match to it's a partial match uh 42 percent match to horatio dawson hmm which is also a 42 percent match to some of the fingerprints that were inside the cigar box which was the 86 ones yeah, 86. Okay, so then we also have um, some more fingerprints on the watch cartouche detail. A fragment of the ring fingerprint was obtained. That one is C, 3, U, 2, 2, 4. 6, 3, 4. 6UB. UB. UB having some fingerprints on this watch. UB. Match restricted. Access denied. Hmm. Notice a match inquiry has been registered and transmitted to the Dartmouth Department of Defense in accordance with Directive 170 06. Hmm. What we did with the card said, what did we do wrong? Um, what this is it's telling protected. us is we can't get to that information because probably it's someone from the military. <gasps> you can dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper. Uh, this last fingerprint that we found, it came up with a restricted <laughs> access denied oh. um, because and it's gone to the Department of Defense that we made this inquiry. Use that token. Do it. That was for the fingerprints on the, what, ring? On the cartouche detail. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, that's something. I see if we want to find out more about the directive, we can spend our token to do so. Spin. Melissa yeah. is in love with spending those tokens. Yeah, she doesn't mind. Yeah. But we're almost halfway done with the game, so... How can you tell? We only have four days. Right. And we gotta go to a funeral tomorrow. Yeah. Right? We I'm have tokens. I say use it. Find out the prince. Find out the prince. Do it. Do it. Bloop. Yeah. Go for it. Do it. Do it. Mm. Give us All some right. there, Prince. So we're going to find out more about that directive, 107B. So I can hide the bottom thing. Oh, 107B is already out. It's on the this? back of this. Oh. Oh. Directive 107B06, uh, 6 is new to you. You do not know what it means. The identification attempt has been registered and transferred somewhere to the Department of Defense. Apparently you are meddling with intelligence affairs. This is the only explanation for the secrecy and restricted access of the fingerprints. You leave the white lab, take the elevator to the underground parking lot, and get in the car. Um, you don't know if you want to chase after this to try to find out more about the mysterious directive. You can always try another method to get to the data. The military, Antares, and the police systems are all connected. Maybe a skilled specialist can bypass the blockade. Or it could possibly rub someone the wrong way. There's a skilled specialist here. 
I'm a computer guy. Um, so we can follow the directive by doing lead number 101, headquarters. So, we used the token just to find out that it, that we might want to look for more information. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like we already kind of knew all of that. Um, we have anything else we can do at the lab, Melissa? Um, that's it. We just had the lab prints 102. Um, well, we could always go back to the headquarters again. All of our leads that we have are um, at headquarters, except for the the tomorrow, the funeral. We're going to do Richmond PD. We could go there for that one. Well, we would, if we went back to the headquarters, we wouldn't have enough time, right? Because it would take an hour to get there. And then... The headquarters is usually the quickest place. I'd say we do the headquarters and then uh, follow the directive. That'll be our last thing for the day. Yeah. All right. It's going to cost us one hour to drive back to headquarters. And then what should we do when we're there? Should we look up the Horatio, Horatio Dawson? Or should we look up Weber and Son? Or should we look up Follow the Directive? I think the directive. So we looked up Dawson. Dawson was the one that had the tattoo with the 7th Army. We looked up Horatio Dawson on here. But not the, the lead thing. But there's a... Um, Down here, we can look at his personnel files from the military and the Department of Veteran Affairs. I see we followed the objective. That's just follow the directive. You think? One on one or whatever. Any opposition to that? Melissa was talking the other day about I'm so bad at these kinds of games, and the whole time she's been driving the ship. <laughs> let's I say this. Ah, well, let's do this. Let's use that. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm taking all the notes, so it helps. It gives I, me see, purpose. I see, I see. I see. Purpose. It's like a little flame. flame. It's a fire. You're a your board game. <laughs> Alright, so we're doing it? Sure. Alright, yeah. so back to card number 101, <coughs> which is costing us, thanks, Melissa, three, three hours. Three hours? I didn't know it was going to take so darn long. Somebody's going to do their job. Two, three. Two more of these, please. Ah! When they come to. When the military comes to arrest us, we'll point to her. <laughs> right. No. Oh, here we don't need this right now. Well, it's still gonna stay up. <laughs> no. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> you spend another hour in front of the computer checking all available databases. A cell phone in your hand, a laptop with a dozen open tabs on your desk. And two desktop towers on nearby desks, hand wire, hardwired into the Antares system, crunching data. You're spent. You made a couple of calls to people higher up in the hierarchy and sent out countless emails. Three cups of coffee and two cigarettes later, you still have nothing. Zilch. You reach an impasse. Procedure 170 or something. Procedure 170 something. Procedure 170 something. What does that mean? Suddenly, the telephone rings. It's Anne Bishop from Delaware's office on the top floor. She says you've received a fax from the Military Archive of the Defense Department in St. Louis, which you hurry to retrieve. Fax from Defense Department. The fingerprints marked by your department are not found in the Department of Defense database. 
Regards, General Henry Brown. That's interesting. P.S. Please fix the glitch causing your system to seek out non-existent files. You come back, toss the facts on your desk, and sit at the computer. You light up another cigarette and read the message one more time. You just can't believe it. Hmm. So... So his name is um, Henry Brown, General Henry Brown. Ooh, what about that other Brown? Could be related to Samuel Brown. Ooh, try to cover up something from his... Don't say children on that list, does no, it? Try to no. do a cover up. Maybe it's an uncle, a long lost cousin or something. He's the know. colonel, the retired colonel. And there was a clerical S error on his thing. Yep. Yeah. Falsifying reports. It could be him. Ooh, snap. Because it already said at one point they well, be old as dirt. had a wrong death. <laughs> he was born in 1912. Yeah, you're right. That's what. This is the guy that I was thinking might be the Nazi. Or he may have falsified the documents to allow the, the Nazis to escape. Because that's why he said he, was falsi he got let go because he was falsifying documents. But then he died... It said one reported one death and then it reported another death. Much later. Yep, yep. Mm. There's like a 30 year difference between the, the what they said. No, it's only like um, seven years difference. 95, 85 and 90. Oh, I thought it said 65. Right. Well, that's interesting, but ultimately useless to us. Unless you want to spend another uh, token to... We don't have that. We'd have to convert one. We could convert one if we needed to. It just takes a star, huh? Mm-hmm. But we don't have many left to convert. Mm-hmm. We can get more stars. Do we want to convert a token do we, do to we, find out? Will it waste any more time? Uh, I don't think so. We have never flipped over a card and it costs us to spend time. I say go yeah. for it. I need to find out something. Can't waste three hours for nothing. Wait a sec. Glitch in the stream. The stream or the system? Yeah. And the system. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's and not really a glitch in the, the system. Glitch causing your system. Well, you could probably press this and see to. The, the handwrite non-existent files. Yeah, for him to handwrite that on there. Yeah. So maybe the, it's urgency that he's, you know, trying to throw us off. And his name is Brown compared to the guy, the mm -hmm. other Brown, who was also. That is interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe but coincidence, but still interesting. All right, I'm doing it. Yep. Spending a star. <laughs> All right. That's my ability, to change it to a joker token. Uh, and then I'm spending the joker token to do this. Okay. Uh-oh. Not good. Not good at all. You put out the cigarette. You read the document again. Confusion hits you. You know the procedure. No one from the Department of Defense sends out faxes. Even if the data is no longer confidential, who replies by fax in this day and age? General Brown answered in a way that avoided the official servers. Why? What's with that SDC3 fingerprints? You don't know what's reeking, but you know that stench. It's pure trouble. Add one overtime. Well, it's actually one stress. We now have four of those. We can't take any more, really. And then I need to add a plot card to case number four. So, whenever the game directs you to do that what you do is take this evidence bag take card number 123 out of here without reading it put that into that bag and we're going to stick it in number four's area right here Ah, where are the gloves? 
So the five cases are one giant overarching story. So this has repercussions later on that we won't find out what they are until we get there. So interesting. Well, that well, seems like the end of this day. We're in overtime. Way in overtime. So let's proceed on to the last day. Day number three, I mean. Start back up at eight. And I think it says something funeral. about... Um, yep, we must go to the funeral. If you decide to go to that day, then you can just start automatically there or that something. That makes sense. <laughs> Didn't it say that? Richmond PD. And while we're at the Richmond PD, we can do card 105 after the funeral. Day three. Uh, if you decide to attend the funeral, you can start that day in Richmond PD location. It's going to be card number 134. 134. Richmond PD. Uh -huh. Funeral. Funeral. Not doing this card. Check. That's gonna take us two hours. Paying out the funeral for two hours. You arrive at Richmond PD in the parking lot. There are over twenty policemen and women wearing formal uniforms with umbrellas in their hands. Within the next few minutes, even more cars arrive until finally everyone gets into the cars and the procession heads to the cemetery. The grim weather and the nasty drizzle are a fitting backdrop to the ceremony. You park at a distance and stand in the back, watching in solemn silence. After it's finished, you talk to several policemen, jumping from topic to topic. The investigation of Slater's hit and run has slumped. The late Slater's wife is a tough woman. After all, she has been the wife of a police investigator all of her life. Slater was retired for 30 years, but he often stopped by the precinct. In the end, the weather forces everyone to flee back to their cars. If you want to talk about his old investigations and cases, come to the station. Says your old pal, Tarkovsky. Yes, yeah. I have such a high voice. <laughs> it's dry there. We have donuts and coffee, and a few of Slater's old friends will also be there. I'm just so sad <laughs> about is, this funeral. This is a pretty good impres impersonation of, the, of uh, Slater's uh, widow, right? <laughs> I just I've been working on this voice for a while. <laughs> All right, so I've placed the car marker back in field work. We can, if we want to, spend a token to talk to the widow. We also have a new lead which is at the police station, number 109. A visit, a visit to the police station, number 109. That's police station. All right. Oh, we're on a new day. It's a brand new day. And the sun is high. And the birds are singing. Everybody die. Okay. Um, all right. So do we want to talk to the widow? No. I don't know what she could give us about Slater. She's going to talk for like an hour. Yeah, he, like, he doesn't seem like he has anything <laughs> to do with this. I don't know why. Well, then why did he get bumped off? Maybe he knew too much. That's what I think. Da, 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 da. You think the widow knows stuff. I think the widow is going to point us in the right direction. All right, let's talk to her. Joe? I'm fine with that. We got it to spend. Think. Standing under a tree away from the crowd, you think about Michael Slater. The crowd at the funeral proves that he was a good cop. <laughs> Even though he was retired for quite some time. Yep. Thank you, Fuzzy yeah. Logic. In New Australia. <coughs> he was still in touch with his precinct. The ceremony is brief, but a bit pompous, as befits a cop's funeral. After the funeral, you follow the widow's car. Along the way, you consider whether you should disturb her right after the funeral. 
When you finally drive up to her house, you decide against it. You'll come back. You note the address. Perhaps there are some notes about Slater's cases in the house. With this on your mind, you leave to grab a quick brunch. Brunch. If you decide to <laughs> disturb the widow... <laughs> he skipped over nothing over here but lunches, brunches, sandwiches, and salads. <laughs> He's got food on the brain. If you decide to disturb the widow, surprise, number 104, surprise. field work. From my happy meal toy surprise, which I was just 44 ounces. Uh, field work. We're in field work. So, field work. we probably need to talk to the partner, right? Did he say if you want to talk to the, the, the high pitched guy? Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> the high pitched guy. <laughs> that's at the police station. Out, but he does kind of have a high pitched voice. <laughs> Yeah, that's Tarkovsky. Good way to Tarkovsky, yeah. One or yeah. Nine. He's not a um he's not his partner or anything. He's just uh, an old pal. Okay, old pal. Let's go visit the old pal. He's a high talker. Yeah. Or we still gotta talk I mean we're already in field work. We could um do we have anything else in field work we could do? Field work. So talking to her took us out of a... Uh, which one? Just going to the funeral. Put us in field work. Oh, okay. We left. We all went to the police department and got in the cars and rode together to field work. Mm. Field work represents everywhere else that's not one of these four locations. Yeah. We don't have anything else in field work. That's it. So you want, you're gonna write down like widow next to that or something? Because we'll forget what that is. Number one hundred four. A one hundred four field work is this widow. I thought this was Slater's widow. The funeral. The one thirty four Richmond PD. That's where we're at right now. But we need to get if. This field work is the widow? Yeah. I thought where we just were was the widow. I guess Am the I widow. confused? No, See, if you decide to disturb the widow, 104 field work. Yeah, but work. this is Slater's widow that we talked about. She was at the funeral, but she also has a house she lives in. Oh, this is perfect. Which is also located in the, the broad area of field work. Right. Right. We live in field work. It's nice here. And you moved up, when did you move over to field work? Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice neighborhood. Like it's a good neighborhood, not a great neighborhood. All right. It's better than the so we're going to go talk to this. There's an old pal at the I'm police station. going to station. disturb her. There's a field work widow. Yep. you got to remember it's going to take time to go to Richmond, though. No, we're going to go to the widow first. So we're going to talk to her now? I guess. It's 104 as, field work. Good a time as any. While she's all, like, emotional, she might spill more information. You know, working like, on one last <laughs> ready? Alright, it's Melissa's order. Alright, we're at 104 field 104 work. field work. Three hours. Three hours? Yeah, she, Jeez, she's she's a spilled talker. her guts. She is a talker. One, two, three. Jeez, I'm right. The entire city. Watch is, the screen. Oh, sorry. Gotta get it on there. The entire city is congested. The light drizzle finally turned into a downpour, and all the streets came to a halt. Are they explaining the three-hour? Yes, you we were here already. Yeah, you wasted an additional <laughs> half hour in traffic, but you finally arrived. Yeah. You waited in the car for a few minutes while watching the house, wondering if you really want to go in there and bother Mrs. Slater. You muster up the courage. You run to the house, jumping over puddles, and knock on the door. A young blonde woman with a nice smile opens the door. Yes, what can I help you with? Good, Good morning. <laughs> can I talk to Mrs. Christine Slater? I am acting under the authority of the FBI. Showing my ID card. <laughs> this is not the best time. Well, I'm sorry. I realize that. Whom do I have the pleasure of speaking with? Linda Evans. Aunt Christine is my... Uh oh ...is my grandmother's sister. I live here because <laughs> I study history at the university. Please come in. Aunt Christine is upstairs. She's lying down because the doctor recommended rest. Please wait a moment. I will go get her. <laughs> you stay in the room. <laughs> Mrs. Slater has just buried her husband and now you're standing in her living room ready to further spoil her day with questions about the former affairs of her husband. Thanks, Melissa. 
I we're gonna we need to add doctor. another one of these in. Melissa said to go. Melissa forced us to go talk to the to the. Yeah, and so we like, drove around. We were we were both like we shouldn't bother that poor woman today. <laughs> yeah. Really, that's so like, horrible. She's What's emotional. No, she was like, she's gonna get over she's it. Like, this is the best time to do it. Spill it. <laughs> while she's while she's raw and, and yeah. vulnerable. <laughs> yep. Get that information out quick. Oh man. Oh no. Plus, I bet they have some somebody left things for them to eat over there. We'll cook. Yep, I got hungry. Yeah, I mean, we already stop. ate our sandwich and Greek, you know, Greek salads, and we need more food. Sure. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we're just on food quests here. <laughs> <laughs> we're hitting them all, though. <laughs> By the way, could I trouble you for a sandwich? <laughs> Triangle shapes. And you have a small room that is just cramped that I can Cut smoke the crust off. Yes. You're somewhere small and cramped, I can smoke it. Yeah. Yes, with the coffee, please. <laughs> it took about a half an hour for the old lady to come downstairs. Her niece led her gently. She was walking slowly with a small wooden cane in her hand. She sat heavily in the armchair. Her eyes were red and swollen, and she was breathing heavily. She's obviously hiding something. How can I help you? Louder. My husband's friend has been keeping me informed, but, but the FBI, I'm listening. She said in a quiet, tired voice. Mrs. Slater, <laughs> we accept your condolences. We are here because a while ago your husband was investigating a case that overlaps our own. Perhaps you know if Mr. Slater had any notes from the old days. It was really long ago. She nodded her head. Of course. Well, you can look here. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> of course, piled up through the years. My husband always liked, liked to keep things organized. He kept his documents neat. He usually wrote down just single words, hip words. He had a great memory and used to say that was only to jog it. A bit funny. I know, but that's just the way Michael was. He kept the notes in the storage room under the stairs. She got up and opened a small door to the cabinet under the stairs. There on the shelf were boxes containing chronologically arranged notes. That's it. It's, they're really well organized. One of the boxes there was a small gray file with 67 Dawson written across it. It appears to have been consulted and never returned to its box. Inside, there are papers and photographs. You start checking them out to see if it has anything connected to the case. Thank you, ma'am. Again, please accept our condolences. I think this is everything we need. All right, we have three cards we can look at, which are the materials about the case, and we also can add a new star to our bucket, which is good because we're about to die. So we have to look at these. We have no choice. Oh, we have another plot card we need to add as well, Joe. So how many of those little red things can yep. we take? Like, are we at max? No, That's we right. can. We have a limit of seven. Uh, oh, that's then, right. It's at seven. And then, then we just have to guess, right? Or, or yeah, here are the, the bags right here. That goes in number two. Case number two. Oh, yes, you die distress. Mm. Can't take this anymore! It's not that we die, it's just that we have to stop. I'm like exhausted. Like, I just, I can't. I just can't. So this one's going to go over here. Because over here. Because we never did the bottom of that one. <coughs> so 132, 127, and 130. We have some things. Case two. Uh, yeah. Chevrolet, okay. Mustang. Cigarette butts. No diaries. Giles. Why didn't he have a weapon? Motive. Robbery. Front door. Jack says Lily Garrett is lying. Oh, the mom? Mm-hmm. Who's Jack? That's June 14th, by the way. Who's I Jack? His partner, jack? maybe. Oh. Do we have any jacks? I haven't written down any jacks. I'm Jack. Oh. Where's, where's, no, this is from 67. 
I'm what was Jaworski? Was what was Jaworski's first name? Who? The high pitched voice guy. The guy oh. that says like I have files, but we didn't go talk to him. We went to talk. Oh, to him we him. never learned what his first yeah. name is. Okay. So it's probably Jack. And then we have a picture here. We don't know who this guy is. We have Nick Torn, Coxon, and Dawson. I think the photos are fake. You, you do? Because I had to make it for this. Yeah, it looks kind of bad. <laughs> so Dawson is Horatio Dawson. He was the one who was murdered during the robbery. We don't know who those other people are. Hmm. I think that's their like code names or something. Yeah. What's the other side of it, again? The, the little. I'll let you look at it. And then we have May fourth, seventy eight. Richard Briggs, twelve thirty. Young, probably military, caring for vets. Seven Army in Europe. Yeah, seven. Brunner. Brenner, Coxon, Brown, their boss. Nick Torn didn't return buddies. Mm. So Brown, he thinks Brown, which is the old man, the one who was falsifying documents, is their boss. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And then what's Brenner, the guy that they didn't identify? Because they said Coxon and Nick Torn. Oh, right, maybe so. And that's what that's seventy eight, which is close to when what's his name was killed, right? The the Marcus Owen. Marcus Owens, which is the dad who was killed in prison in sixty eight. Okay. So uh, this is much after the fact he's doing. This is the mom died in about this time. From diabetes, though, not yeah. from foul play. The back says, Doctor who he was. Asked about Dawson, Buckman, and Brown. Who he was. <laughs> Dawson we've got, and we've got Brown. We don't know. Oh, Buckman. Buckman, yeah, Buckman was Buckman. a name That's that I thought he was the name used. used. The, the, KB? Yeah, KB used KB Buckman, guy. yeah. Okay, so we know Dawson. That's this guy. Buckman, which is this guy. And Brown, this guy. Mm -hmm. We know who all of them are. Anna, picture. Marcus plus day equals okay. He came in the back, went out the front. Where are the Dawson's diaries? Marcus? No, doesn't make sense. New data, Giles is dead. Who's Giles? I have no idea. Marcus was caught. This, Giles. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Giles is mentioned over here. Oh. Can you, yep, so those are, those, those are two days, June 14th, June 15th. Oh. Mm. Literally the next day. Marcus was caught in the top, ordered to close the case. That one doesn't have a back. So someone in charge ordered the case closed? Yep. Um, oh, that's May 4th, 1978. It's way later. Yeah. We don't have a rich, we don't know who Richard Briggs is, right? Briggs at the top of May 4th note. No, we don't. I don't think so. Melissa, you got that written down anywhere? Richard Briggs? This is young, probably. Richard, no, probably right. military caring for vets. No, I didn't write a Richard down on the AP. Okay, well, he was. Hmm. What Nick Torn didn't return. On the 14th one, what's it say after the cigarette cigarette butts? And then what? 
No. No diaries. So we don't know who Giles is. Or Jack. Jack says Lily Garrett is alive. This is in 1989 right here. Mm-hmm. And then we have the picture. I mean, we have some faces on this, uh, that program. Yeah. Because Dawson's clearly Dawson. Yeah, he is. The only picture we have of Brown is him as an old man. True. Although they kind of look similar. Might be him. But it doesn't really tell us anything or help us with this case. Mm. As far as I can tell. So who is Giles? We don't know. Yeah, Giles. Investigate the events Giles. leading up to the watch from Poland ending up in the Ying auction house. Discover all stages and find evidence to confirm them. One thing's for sure, we can't be working any more overtime. Okay. Because, well, today's day three anyways. We have one final so, day. The so stress think, limit is seven. So we think the Nazi had it. Nazi changed the thing to whatever, Buckman. Wait, we only have one day left? Yeah, gave, four days. Gave the watch to, to them mm. that Brown had it. Later on, Dawson tries to rob, rob it from Brown and is killed. And then... Marcus Owen ends up with it because he got it out of his dad's and out then, of the floor, and then and then the, he, Marcus well, Owen was the dad. Yeah, Rupert the, Owens. Rupert got Owens, it from Owens is Marcus the son that then found it in the mm. porch. I think Joe's got it. I don't know if that's it, but <laughs> it seems like that's what we learned. <laughs> when we get to the question part, Joe, you're in charge. Yes. Yeah. All right, what else can we do for the rest of the day today? What other leads do we have that we haven't followed? Um, oh, we can't go into overtime? Is that? No. no. We can't. Okay. We need to not go into overtime. All right, so oh, we did we all never the field know until work. We see the time. We're on the third day, right? Yeah, We're on, on day three. Day. Yeah, so we still have a whole day all four? Right. Yeah, we do. Oh, okay. So the only things that are leads that we haven't done is the headquarters for the Dawson guy, Richmond PD for 105. What was that? That was the uh, case. Yeah, right, uh, the the reference to that case. What was the reasoning the game only gives only four days? Oh, this particular case gives us four days. Each case has a different set of days. Ah. Uh, yeah. So it's dependent on the case. I think that's the, the Dawson murder robbery. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not sure. It was at the bottom of one of the... Unless I didn't write it down. It's so. just, I just have Richmond PD... 105. It was linked in one of the... Can you go to the bottom of Dawson's page? Uh, 109? You have that one? 109 Police Station. Uh, visit Old Pal. It's not on any of these cards. Can I look at the bottom of Dawson's thing? Uh, 105. Yeah, we need to do that. I really think we should do that. Incident? Uh, oh, the robbery? Yeah. Now, I think that robbery is, is important. Is that time going to push us up over time? Because it's going to Richmond PD, which takes an hour. Yeah. And then Richmond and then, PD was high time. Yeah. I don't remember. If it takes anything more than two hours, we're going into overtime. Two to three hours, it says. I mean, we can chance it. So that's three to four Most with the time to travel there. As so long as we don't hit seven. I think we're allowed to hit seven, but if we go over seven, we're in trouble. I couldn't find the answer. Oh, here we go. If your collect stress tokens equal to or greater than your stress limit, you end immediately and must go to the database to complete your final report. Ooh, so we can't even equal it. Mm. Well, I mean, the thing is we'll have time tomorrow to start off new. If we can find something else to do out in the field, that may not eat too, many, too much time. We don't have anything else in the field. field. Oh. We have the police I mean, station to, to visit the sure old pal. Anything. Yeah. We have headquarters to do the attorney's thing. 
Richmond PD for the robbery and headquarters for da to find out about more about Dawson. That's, we always that's start it. at headquarters. Mm -hmm. So we could. We could just you know call call it. Let's go get a uh, Greek salad. Looking Greek salad yep. and a sandwich. With a sandwich. And some coffee. Some brandy. Some coffee. Well, headquarters usually takes one to two hours. So we could go back to headquarters and do one of these leads at headquarters. That sounds good. Should we learn more about Dawson or their attorneys? These are Melissa's notes. Yep. I'm kind of curious about what the attorneys are. But I mean, Dawson, Dawson in his case file seems to be, be the... I think we might get more information out of that. So we're going to headquarters and do the... Web so we're going to headquarters, spending one time for that. And then what's the number for uh, one, Dawson? 120. Oh wait, no, Dawson? Dawson's 113. 113. Two hours. Alright. Just enough. So yeah, we do this enough. and then we shut it down for the day. Unless it has more on the back. <laughs> the computer on the desk behind you looks Four connections between Dawson, Horatio, World War II, Europe. Veterans diaries, interviews, memories, photos, archives, anything that will allow you to get more information about this man. Someone, somewhere, had to write something about him. Someone, somewhere, must remember him. In a letter from the war or in an interview. Somewhere, for sure. Mm. On the monitor, subsequent documents flash, download, get analyzed, and rejected. The computer on the right analyzes information about military tattoos and the expression, seven steps to hell. The images flash one by one on the monitor. It took you a few minutes to set up filters that would discard the results with prison tattoos. Without those filters, it would take weeks to sort through them. While these two behemoths are running down the information superhighway, dragging information through the fiber optic, you're battling the forums from the National Personnel Records on Center in St. Louis, trying to file an application for Dawson's military files. Finally, you give up. Pick up the phone and make a call. A nice lady promises to take care of it personally. Ten minutes later, you receive your answer by email. We regret to inform you that the files of Mr. Dawson belong to a group of documents destroyed in a fire on July 12, 1973. All that is left is the following data, a catalog card from the inventory sheet. Regarding the conduct of the service, we do not have any information, although it can be concluded from the number of distinctions that it was exemplary. Hmm. Maggie says, I'm curious about the attorney since we were surprised when they handed us the card. Oh, yeah, the business card. We can check them first thing the next day. So I've got Horatio pulled up here in Antares, and we've got him here, March 12, 25, White Springs, Texas. That seems to match. And then we've got death, June 1467, in Richmond, Virginia. His service, though, was from January 43 to November 45. From 46 to 55 in Fort Lee training. Um, his allocation, 7th Army, 6th Infantry Corps. He was a sergeant. Distinguished Service Cross. Purple Heart. Bronze Star. European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal. And two things we can Google. Husky operation and undertone operation. He's buried at Virginia Veterans Cemetery. We can do some field work there at the cemetery to look at his grave. But we do get a star. Anybody look up husky operation or undertone operation? So much food. Oh my god, I have leftover Mexican food from my favorite Tex-Mex place in town in my refrigerator. When I get home, I'm gonna eat the heck out of it. What place is it? Superior Grill. Oh, okay. It's an Allied Invasion, Husky Operation, Allied Invasion of Sicily. Okay. Major campaign, major campaign in World War II, Battle of Sicily. So he was in, in Italy. Hmm. How about the undertone operation? 
that's not what you were looking at. No. <laughs> making sure the quality is fine with the stream. Operation Undertone was the largest assault by the U.S. 7th and French 1st Armies of the U.S. 6th Army Group for an Allied invasion of Germany in March 1945. Hmm. Yep. You got our uh, field work 131 here. That's the lead. And make sure you write down that's the Virginia Veterans Cemetery. Number 131 field work. All right, I think we should call it a day. Yep. Yeah, we're at so the we end of that. One day left. So we'll zip this back, zip this down. This is our last day. Um, I think at the end of today, we have to put in our report. I think our plan of attack on this last day should be to take care of the Webern Sun attorneys while in headquarters, then to travel to the, the, the um, cemetery, the cemetery, um, for this field work thing. But see, we also have this robbery thing at Richmond PD. The robbery, so should we do the robbery? Oh, or the I really want to look up about that robbery. I think for sure the attorneys while we're in headquarters because I can't take more than one or two hours and we're already here. And y'all said y'all wanted to ask about the attorneys as we we're surprised to get their car. Yeah, that's what Maggerty yeah. said. Yeah, so should we? Should we start there? Should we start attorneys, there and then the decide where to go? Robbery or field work? Robbery over cemetery. Yeah. yeah, we don't need yeah. to go to the cemetery. There's nothing there. Yeah, so I'd say... I think the cemetery thing will probably prove that... Because, you know, they'll put the what medals they received on the marker, most likely, and then we'll probably see that that's different than what was in the file. Because uh, they said it was exemplary or whatever. Yeah. Well, we don't have any indication that he didn't have exemplary service. Yeah. I'd say this is just forego that. Just let's But, I mean, if you, get, if you know the guy that's falsifying stuff, why not? Yeah. Oh, true, true, true. I say we do the attorneys and the robbery, and that might be all of our time because it's gonna we're gonna take one or two hours here with the, the attorneys, and then travel for an hour to the Richmond PD, and then that's probably two or three hours for the robbery. That might be it. Okay. So, and what about talking to the friend or whoever it was, the old pal? That's at the police station. That's Richmond PD. So we might be able to knock out two birds with one stone while we're there. Yeah, mm. if we have the time, depending on how overtime we go. So are we sure we want to talk to, uh, look up the attorneys before we leave? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what number is it, Melissa? It is number 120. 1 hour, it's not bad. You turn on the main monitor, the 80-inch beast made to order for Antares that is hanging on the wall across from your desk. You begin to pin the folders of data relating to Weber and Son. Two desktop towers begin the data hunt. You use one of the machines to search the Virginia court files for cases conducted by Weber and Son. On the other, you find company employees, their accounts on social networking sites, photos, speeches, and anything else that can help you draw conclusions. You finish off some Chinese food brought in by... Chinese food! Oh, Chinese food! Brought in by someone from downstairs and view data about Adam Weber on your laptop. His earnings, expenses, insurance, trips. Meanwhile, the two desktop PCs put everything that matters on the main monitor. Unfortunately, there's not much. Weber and Son is a small law firm run by a father and son. Adam Weber, Owens' lawyer, is its owner. He specializes in submitting medical and post-accident claims. Neither his past, income, nor his affairs indicate anything interesting. He met Rupert Owens when the latter was caught on DUI charges. His son graduated from law school three years ago and has been a partner since then. Uh, so he just, I mean, they're just cheap. That's all there yep. is to it. Yep. He just got them for cheap. cheap. He had no money, so he just got these cheap lawyers that probably aren't going to do anything. Yep. I'm writing cheap <laughs> lawyers. 
He's a chief doesn't dude. sound like a criminal lawyer. Nope, yeah. chief lawyers. Probably doesn't know what they're doing. All right, off to the police station we go. Dink, dink. All right, so what shall we visit the old pal first or find out about the robbery? The robbery has been on my radar for a right, long so time. All right, so 105. Dink, dink, dink. Now we're already there, and if this is already throughout, that might be, we might still be able to visit the pal without going into overtime. Yep. All right, the rain starts to annoy you, but what irks you even more is that some stickler did not want to mail the scan, so you had to go down to get them personally. You reach the precinct, entering the official entrance on the other side of the lobby, away from the hustle and bustle of detainees. You pass the investigation room on the right, turning next to the locker room and showers, and reach the archive located at the end of the corridor. You flash your badge, fill out a request, form, turn it in, then sit in an old metal chair to wait. This part of the police station is quiet and peaceful. After a while, Susie's worried face appears in the window. Someone must have misplaced him. Please wait a moment. We're looking for him. How come so many English people are living in Richmond, Virginia? I don't know. <laughs> you spend the next it. several minutes savoring the legendary Richmond PD vending machine coffee, known as the worst sludge. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's like The worst sludge. The worst You know sludge. that if Susie is on the case, she will go the extra mile to find what you need. And you're not mistaken. In the end, they find it. You have in your hands the printed out scans of the full contents of the 67 folder. We get one of these. Cool. Little star token. And we're going to read a new file. File but, at one of um, the Yeah, and then we can compare it to the original if we spend this thing. There's a lot of eating and drinking in this game. Yep, there's coffee and sandwiches, the worst sludge. We've got Chinese food, Greek, Greek salads. Salad. Yep. Yeah. Um, could you please put this on screen? Sure. These food sounds good. Look under the insert of your detective box. Did I do that in the unboxing? Oh, I actually forgot that. You will find a couple of additional handouts. Please open and read only the one titled File 1. It should include a case file and an attachment with the plans sneaky, of the sneaky. building. Sneaky, sneaky now. Oh, the <laughs> oh, no, we're tilted now. Whoa. It's like Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Engage! Engage! Whoa! This is fancy. It's a fancy folder with little pocket. Oh, something else is written on the back. It, Remember I, to pick up dry cleaning. Decode. Do, re, remember. Call me when you're ready. I see that. All us. Oh wait. Oh, they call us when you're. Per and uh, or possible or possible and or possible. I don't know what these three words are. Yeah. Remember to something, blank blank, and or. Possible. Here, like, Willis, I'm going to pass that off to you so I can look at this stuff. So we've got oh, some, um, we've got a lot of stuff here. we got um, two. police reports, uh, maps of the houses. This is like, we should have totally gone here first. <laughs> All right, so... Um, we have Henry Giles. Oh, the Giles guy. The one we didn't know about. Giles yeah, is Yeah, he's a suspect. Oops. A yeah, minor pickpocket. The investigating officer is Sergeant Michael Slater, Richmond Police Homicide Department. We have Marcus Owens, whom we know so well. He's the pawn shop owner. That's the dad. 
Oh, he's a pawn shop owner. And we have Horatio Dawson. He is a florist and flower shop owner. Of course he is. We've got a picture of Henry Giles as well. Does this match? Oh, that one thing? This picture right here. That explains how we got that watch. Somebody probably just brought it into the pawn like shop trying to get mark. money. Wait, does he have the the cigar burn? Well, there's a lot more information here. Uh, on June 14th, 1967, at 8, 11 p.m., a police patrol arrived at Horatio Dawson's home at 147 Chillingham Road in Richmond. This is their house layout. Um, on a disorderly conduct call, the policeman approached the porch and noticed the door to the house was open. There was... So this is at Horatio's house. There was no response to the policeman's calls, so they entered the premises. Upon entering at the foot of the stairs, they found the body of a tall, well-built man who was later identified to be Horatio Dawson. So he's right there. He was murdered in his own house. The body laid face down with both legs remaining partially on the stairs. The policeman confirmed lack of vitals. Backup units in an ambulance were called at 819. The coroner, coroner confirmed death. Physical evidence available at Richmond PD Evidential Magazine. Description of the crime scene. See annex graphic of first and second floor layout. Both the residential property and the attached flower shop had signs of burglary. The glazed glass door in the kitchen leading to the garden was open and the glass just above the lock was broken. The kitchen cabinets and drawers were open and some of the dishes were thrown on the floor. In the living room, there were broken vases, books from the shelves scattered on the floor and open cabinet doors. The door to the flower shop was found open with pots shattered on the floor and boxes torn open. In the office, papers were scattered across the floor. A broken drinking glass was found under the drawers on the side wall. No fingerprint traces were secured. The glass was wiped. A red ceramic pot containing a Florida tassel flower was broken and dirt was scattered under the window. A footprint size, shoe size 11. Uh, eight, eight, Dawson, eight and a half and nine. Dawson had 11. Oh, that's his own foot then? Yeah, he was, he was t tall and he had 11. Was found in the dirt. The desk was moved approximately 12 inches towards the back wall and parallel scratches were found in the wooden floor. The front edge of the desk has been dented. Traces of type A blood were discovered despite an attempt by the perpetrator to wipe them clean. On the desk, there was a typewriter with a piece of paper loaded, a green desk lamp, and three pencils on top of the desk. Had been wiped, no traces were secured. The open desk drawers contained old 9 by 19 millimeter Parabellum cartridges. We can look that up. Nine by nineteen millimeter parabellum cartridges. A three point three pound brass ashtray was found on the desk, and small traces of tobacco were scattered on the floor. The safe in the office was open with the combination lock in the open position. The safe contained insurance papers and bank statements. The statements revealed that Dawson withdrew his full account balance on the eve of his death. He cashed out a total of $16,452. The money was not found. A footprint was found on the office door frame, five and a half inches above the floor, and type A blood. Traces were found on the corridor floor, 19.6 inches from the entrance door frame. Blood trailed the railing of the stairs. A piece of the rail was broken off at a 10 degree angle on the west side of the stairs. Blood traces were found on the 6th, 10th, and 12th step. The traces were blood, type A blood. Evidence signatures. We have some fingerprints here that I need to put in. Magritte asked for the typewriter. What's that regarding? I think the cartridge. The cartridges are actually like bullet cartridges. For bullets. Yeah, yeah. They're for a Luger. Um, not a, not a typewriter cartridge. And Luger is a German gun. The name Parabellum is derived from "If you seek peace, prepare for war." Yeah, 9 by 19 Parabellum is a firearms cartridge. 
So this is from um, 1902. Fingerprint uh, from kitchen cabinets, etc. So that's Henry Giles. His fingerprint was found all over the house. And this is the first time we've ever seen Henry Giles, 005. He's got a burn scar on his cheek. Yep. Ooh, burn scar. Burn Our scar. note taker has given up taking notes during the she's pivotal a, moment of the she's game. She's found a cat. She's just <laughs> like, instead I'm going to eat and play with a kitty. Let's see, Giles is the 005. And burn mark. Uh, Didn't we hear a story about that? Yeah, the there was a burn. Watch? He's, He's also a, 5 foot 6 inches. 5 foot 6, yeah. Duh. Scar on face, dark hair, dad's friend. Mm -hmm. Like, he has a, like a cigar. Size of Short guy, 5 foot wow. 6. His shoe size is 11. The body hey, was the cremated. The footprints were 11. Yep. Probably him. He was a... Oh. That's great. His blood type is A. A? I didn't write anything about... Well, I talked about blood type A about 20 times while I was reading this. Oh, that A. I was... Because there was a A... The Marcus guy, his was like A, B or something? No, no. Z, o. The Marcus guy was like an O. Oh, wow. Okay, he was shot to death during an exchange of fire with policemen during his arrest on suspicion of being an accomplice to a robbery. <laughs> that's a that's, that's I had to grab a cookie. Okay. Put that in your notes. So, cookie. let's see. SD. Oh. Need to go back man. here to fingerprint traces from the brass ashtray. Is why, why you... The Chinese lady gave us cookies. Oh, that, was, that, was, that was two days ago. XXX. I saved some, okay? Six. And then BHU XX5. Oh, like command. <laughs> oh, oops, I didn't put in a description. Oh, it <laughs> listed it for me. Did it really? Yeah, fingerprint on a brash ashtray. Oh. It well. is a. It is a pretty good match to Horatio Dawson. 50%. That makes sense since it's his house. We have XXER8S. XXXATE. So you don't have to put in the description? You can put in your own personal description. Ah, okay. I guess you don't have to. So this is um, an 8% match to Marcus Owens, which is the dad. Him. Daddy. No, that was when he was 38. <laughs> or maybe younger, who knows. Something before he died when he was 38. Um... But that is also like inside the cigar box. Could be a lot of things. So then we have SM. So this is a material here. This is the dirt from the ceramic pot that contained the footprint. AYTV97. BNYU52. It contains chemicals for plant growth. <laughs> At some point, the cigar box was stored in Horatio Dawson's house. That proves a connection between Dawson and the cigar box. Ooh. So the sample of soil from the cigar box matches to the sam sample that has the footprint in his house. Mm. Uh, so then let's see, we have another SM here. 86 RTEY. This is the seeds in a soil sample taken from the ceramic pot. So those are the seeds that were in there. Mm -hmm. 
And then we found some more. It's a cold case, so no one's alive. We're just trying to figure out why. Yeah, it's like we're trying to figure out the connection between how did the the auction house receive the watch and like figuring out the path of like how did it get from point A to point point B. So right. his fingerprints are found all over because it's his house, so that makes a lot of sense. So that's that, Melissa. You can look at that since you missed all of it while you were gone. If you want to. Whoops. Up to you. Time roll. Hey, don't Hello. Really. So, murder suspect Henry Giles. Henry Giles was allegedly a witness to the victim's attempt to sell valuables at a pawn shop. Oh, he the and his shop partner, works. Marcus Owens, made the decision to break into Dawson's home. Giles allegedly tracked the victim to his home. On the evening of June 14th, Giles parked a car on Rosemond Street. He broke into Dawson's home from the garden, leaving a footprint in the dirt. Size 11. The course of events is alleged as follows. Giles held Dawson at gunpoint. The weapon was found on the suspect the next day. Giles forced the victim to open the safe. There was a struggle followed by screams. Giles pushed the victim down the stairs. He then searched the house chaotically. The perpetrator likely heard the passing patrol, ran out of the house through the back exit, along with a bag of stolen items, and drove off. Suspect Henry Giles was shot dead during the attempted arrest on the following day, June 15, 1967. In the car, a green Chevrolet sedan, there were the day's sales from a flower shop, a 38 caliber revolver, and an old P08 Parabellum pistol, which matches to the shells. Mm -hmm. All items were collected during the police intervention. The accomplice, Marcus Owens, his testimony reveals that Horatio Dawson visited the pawn shop with the intention of selling a variety of jewelry. Owens bought some of the items from the victim for a total of $487. Owens, working as Giles' silent partner, informed Giles that Dawson had more valuables. However, he denied being involved in the robbery. Testimony of Marcus's ex-wife, Lily Garrett, confirmed the suspect's alibi. And here's all kinds of other people we can look up and things we can look up, but we may have already looked at a lot of this. And then we have the layout of the house here as well, which could be helpful to us. Um, I don't know that we need it. So, Dawson had the watch. He tried to sell some stuff. They sent Giles over. Probably Marcus went as well, because he thought Lily was lying in the other report that he was probably there. He came back, gave some of the jewelry to his wife and the money. Because remember, they had money in the Dawson. For some reason, mm -hmm. Dawson cashed out all his stuff, though. So we don't, we don't know that yet. Yeah. Let me see and the list of further leads and see if what we have or haven't. Yeah, done. you might have he some came of back those and buried the watch. Out what I'm not sure it's important. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't see 106 Richmond on our list, which we're here already. That's more evidence related to the case. Was there a porch? That's not the house with the porch. Oh. No, that's a different house. This is, this is, here is a floor shop inside, so that's what, the, he had the box. Oh, the flower shop right there, I see. He had the box, remember there was like the dirt. I was like, what is, why is there plant growth stuff on this? Box, right. When it's been under the porch. Can we see the handwriting on the back of the file again? Yeah. Mm hmm. Let me uh, fix the. Uh, it looks like to here. me, remember to something and then call me when you're ready. That we figured out. That One second. Middle yeah. part, I have no clue. Focus in on it. There it is. That's for sure. Possible is the last word in that sentence. Remember to Remember either decide to. or decode the the floor. I don't know. Call me when you're ready. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's purposefully ineligible. In in illegible. Oh, yeah. But wasn't they took really like good notes? Thing the other thing, there. right? Yeah, we can see that's not his handwriting at all. Yeah, that one was clear. So a lot of this stuff makes a lot more sense now. 
You know that mind me to direct you to, to talk to Tur Turbusky or whatever? The That's our last thing at the police station we could do without going into overtime is to talk to the old pal while, we, we'll, while we're already here. Because a lot of these things, this is just going to give us more stuff about uh, Dawson. Like Dawson's autopsy report, Dawson's grave, Dawson, like, you know, related to the case. This is the only one that's not consulting a forensic uh, psychologist, so that's going to send us to the courthouse, which is yeah. going to take time, yeah. plus going overtime. So, so the only ones we can do is look at the evidence, his autopsy report, or um, visit the old pal. I think we need to visit the old pal. Because he might have something he could tell us extra. What do, what do we need to know now, though? Why did he take all that money out of his account? And here's some other thoughts that this guy had. Um, he came in the back, went out the front. What did we read? He came in the what and went out the what? In the what? What? what, what? Yeah, ran out of the house through the back exit and drove off. So why does this say he came in the back and went out the front? Where are Dawson's diaries? Marcus? No. Doesn't make sense. Giles is dead. Marcus is caught. The top has ordered to close the case. I think Giles was killed purposefully so he couldn't talk. Mm. And Marcus was arrested so they'd have no one to squeal. And also, like, if they all knew each other, Dawson's in this picture. Yeah, Dawson. Yeah. That's the people... Dawson didn't know Owens or Giles. Oh, so who are Nick Torn and Coxon then? That's the other people that are in the bigger scheme of things. Oh. Uh, They're part of the, the spider. Seven thing. Army. Well, yeah, Seven Army, maybe the spider thing. They were in the Seventh Army, and so they got the watch to get the to get the the original guy the Oh, no, who this out. question mark thing So is. Dawson had to watch from then. like this Skiles person. And so, maybe Giles came there. The house layout. He may have come at the wrong mm -hmm. time or something like that. Yeah, why would they give you that? Yeah, because we've got, we've got the kitchen. We've got the front entrance here. We have the entrance to the store over here. Where's the... Where's the back? That's what I was curious Where's about. Oh, this leads out to the back garden back here. Oh, there's that plant stuff. But we know that he ended in the store. He he stepped in the plant and stuff over there. The dirt. Mm -hmm. But he could have been in the garden with the dirt. No, it was specifically he, over here. His footprint was in here. There's some dirt from a pot and he stepped in it. Yeah. It sounds like this whole thing is dirty. Mm -hmm. And they were covering stuff up right and left. Mm -hmm. And that That's shootout with Giles, they definitely killed him on purpose so he wouldn't be able to talk. I think There's something right here about power. Giles. Why didn't he have a weapon? Motive, robbery, front door. Jack says Lily Garrett is lying. Who's Jack? Did we find that out? Probably his partner. We need to go talk to the old pal. I think that should be our last thing we do. We're already here. Yeah, we got nothing else. And plus, if we go over... Then we just get one, you know, we won't. There's no way to go, like, even if it's four hours, which has been the most we've seen, it's not, it's, it's not going to stop us. It's going to put us, what, one away from stop. I said right. talk to the pal. Okay, what number is the pal? Uh, 109. Sure. At the police station. Yeah. Visit old pal. I mean, no, let's go get a Chinese food. <laughs> I want more of that, that lady's cookies. <laughs> that one was a little stale from two days ago. Well, this one's two hours here. <clears throat> we got a lot of stuff. Yeah. Just thought of an idea if we do this again is we can take pictures of this and upload it to Discord so they can check it whenever they want to. Oh, we, uh, we had an option before we go to this 109 to um, compare the scans to the original by spending this token. Will that take time? Might. Compare the scans to the original. We got so, like, gone that we forgot we could do this. 
Let's do that. Yeah. So, so yes, well, it, only, it could take time. The only the, problem is, is now, the, um, did we see the time on that card already? I did. So we already know if we should or shouldn't do that now. Well, if we do does, that, we don't. Let's just say we have to do that card no matter what, because I saw what it was too, because I saw you push the thing back. So <laughs> two out of the four of us know how much time that's going to take. We should just have to do that, even if this takes time. Okay. This, this hadn't usually taken time when we flipped it over, right? Only one time it did. All right. Let's Came in the store and left out the back? Maybe. It could have been, yeah. Walked out the back card. All right, so we're spinning it, sounds like. Yep. Okay, okay. didn't take any time. Good. No time taken. Apart from Susie, there are several other people working in the archives whom you don't trust. You do not want to have to come back here in an hour because there was something missing from the file. You take the scan out of your briefcase and decide to compare it to the original documents. You flash your badge at the archive employee and ask him to show you the contents of the original folder so you can be sure that you have a complete scan. The guy is grumpy, but you have experience. Old papers, archives, and evidence magazines are your domain. You share some stories from the archives in Missouri where you had your training years ago and the atmosphere lightens. The employee waves his hand and lets you inside. He points to the right bookshelf and says, you can rummage through them freely. He leaves, wishing you good luck. That's exactly what you wanted. You go to the bookshelf and rifle through the box with the 67 files. You see that sandwiched between the notes is a small crumpled piece of paper. It must have fallen out of one of the files. Yes, you know it looks like a stroke of luck, but why not? Sometimes these things just happen. There's information on the note signed with the name Slater. In the investigation, the fingerprints of Henrietta Marcos and her two children were omitted. Henrietta was a neighbor and housekeeper. The prints of her and her children, mainly her son Andrew, were practically all over the house. Apart from that, the scans matched the original. Her son Whoa, Andrew. What the heck? Andrew Marcos? Who's he? Well, I never <laughs> heard about him. Oh, dear. All over the place. Well, I don't know if that's useful or not. <laughs> but I got a card here that we've already all decided we're going to do. Right. Two time. <laughs> the 6th Richmond Police Station is a place always bustling with life, though today the lobby is quiet and peaceful. It's as if the rain made even the criminals stay inside, perhaps to give cops the opportunity to say goodbye to Slater. You look around for someone familiar. You spot Susie Washington from the archives, but she seems to be in the middle of a discussion. I'm discussing things. You see Karkovsky behind the glass door of the investigation room. You knock, nodding to Kark Tarkovsky. He gestures you to come in. The room has a relaxed atmosphere. A few cans of Coke. Donuts. Coke donuts. Coke donuts. Coke and donuts. Laughter. It's been 30 years since Slater retired, but there are are still a few cops who worked with him or at least have heard about him. The police are like a family. Generations work here and Slater was a living legend. A few of the cops are sharing stories about their late friend. One is bragging that during the first month of his service he knocked out the guy who wounded Slater with a screwdriver. Another mentions the 80s when they were in high speed chase but ran out of fuel. They had to wait for another patrol car to bring him gas. Thus the Patrol Patrol nickname was born. After retiring, Slater often jogged by the police station. He liked to stay current on all of the happenings at the station and offer advice when solicited. He knew his stuff. They said he always had a hunch. Rumor had it, he worked even more at home where he kept a lot of files and notes from his previous cases. He archived everything thoroughly. So we could ask about the case. I could use my ability to change one of our tokens. I say go for it. We're at the end. Even if it cost us time, this is it. So I'll spend this to convert this into a talky talk thing. Mm -hmm. Which means I have to put one of these on me and flip this over. Among the cops, you spot an older guy who looks less cheerful than the others. You ask Tarkovsky about him. That's Jack Rivers, Slater's old pal, his first partner. They worked in homicide together in the 60s. Jack Rivers. You decide to ask Rivers about Slater. We Which found is, out Jack, Jack Rivers. This is stuff we've done already. I'm bothering the widow. 
But we did find out the last name of this Jack person, Rivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, right. It's Rivers, Riviers, R I V I E R. Yes, Jack was a good guy. Michael was a good guy. Oh, Michael was a good guy. Jack, too. Type of cop who <laughs> everyone respects. Even the young people who thought they knew everything. He had something in him. Kind of calmness of precision. He wasn't knowledgeable about new technology, and nobody teased him about that. People knew that even without the tech, he would find out more than the others. He often took the work home with him, working overtime. It was his life. A pencil, a notebook, a work around the clock. Even if the case was a no-brainer, he dug deeper. I remember in the late 60s, we worked on the murder case of some florist. Yeah, the top was pressing us to close that case as fast as possible. And Mike, Mike, <laughs> he was running around all pissed that week because they wouldn't let him do his job. I told him to let it go, but he never listened. I don't know what happened next. He transferred me shortly after. After half an hour of hanging out with the cops, reminiscing about Slater, you no longer have any doubts. The guy kept case files at his home. The pencil and notebook he always was writing in were mentioned several times. But do you want to disturb Slater's widow? I already did it. Yeah! We already did that. <laughs> we definitely want to disturb the widow. Alright. Well, we still have a little more time. Uh, uh, we can go to the... Donuts? Let's get some more of that Coffee sludge coffee. Yeah, sludge coffee. Sludge coffee. Um, we could go to the, uh, the cemetery. No, we can't. Oh. We can't go driving off to somewhere. We can do stuff that's here. Like we can look at the um, yeah, we could evidence get... related to the case, or we can do the autopsy report. I think evidence might. Well, no, the autopsy. The report. autopsy might. I think he might have been dead before. Because Giles didn't even have a gun, right? How did? How did? The guy died. Well, remember the the Luger or whatever? The German yeah. gun? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it says here... Like a Nazi would use. He was shot dead. In the car, this sedan was the... Uh, the Chevrolet was the day's sales from the flower shop and the thirty-eight caliber revolver and the pistol. The Parabellum pistol. Which one was that? The uh, Giles was found that way. Well, I'm saying that Dawson may have been killed before Giles. Giles may not have killed him. Okay, well, we can look at that. The right. uh, autopsy report, 117. Yep. Wait, is it... But what's his name? Slater's note said Giles didn't have a weapon. But then they said they found a weapon. Right. They found two. Yep. Well, might as well look at the autopsy, see how he died. What you thinking, Joe? Well, I'm just saying that he picked the gun, most likely he picked the, the German weapon up from Dawson if he had it. So we have to see what Dawson was shot with. What, how was, did it say, ever say how Dawson was killed? Yeah, he was shot. But, like, with what? Oh, no. Um, did it say that? Or did he say he was strangled? Dawson was murdered in home. That's all I wrote down. Murdered. Murder. Murder. Well, I mean, if we get one more, it wouldn't put us over any. I mean, we're going to have to answer anyway. A murder on a Sunday. Right. He was at the foot of the stairs. Well built man. Oh, they said he, they, 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 he pushed him down the stairs. Oh. Mm. They said that. But he's a little guy. Five foot six. Yeah. How can you push a six so foot should we look it down up? the stairs? Yeah, I think the autopsy might. I don't think I could push Joe down the stairs. What? Yeah. It's not about height. It's about power. One hour. All right, cool. All right, this is it. Don't get scared. You go through the staff entrance. You pass two policemen from the traffic department who are leaving the station. While verbally assaulting a group of cuffed women being guided down the corridor to the cells, the girls do not hold back and repay the favor. The corridor turns into a 
Cacophony. A cacophony. Loud noises. Ah, of insults and curses. You try to simply walk by the group, but they struggle with the policeman leading them. Suddenly, one of the girls, hurling curses, breaks free and jumps towards the exit, chasing after the two policemen who have already left for the parking lot. You react instinctively. You catch her halfway and press her up to the wall. Holding her, you call out for someone to take care of the mess. Of this mess, the rest of the women react wildly to the scene, which just unfolded in the corridors, chaotic for a few minutes. You retreat, pushing brutally through to take the corridor towards the archive. Behind you, you can hear insults being screeched at you. You approach the service window. You are lucky that Susie is on the job now. She is a favorite of the entire police station. With her, the job always gets done. The documents were already waiting for you. You fill out the application form to respect the procedure and take the files. A pleasant surprise. Post-mortem autopsy report. Horatio Dawson. Date of examination, June 15th, 1967. Body of a man, age 42. The meaning of life. Weight, 192 pounds. Height, 5'11". He was six foot. He lied. <laughs> Let type A. Fingerprints. And that code, yeah. Yep. So it should be Y-U-3-4-5-6-B-H-U-Y-82. Yep, correct. Internal organ condition. This says he's six foot. That says he's 5'11". That's close. Unchanged. Alcohol and, in and intoxication substances in the blood not found. Autopsy. Oval bruise, bruise on the right calf just below the knee. Bruises and numerous abrasions. abrasions on the face and on the left side of the neck. One inch bruise above the right temple. Bruises and longitudinal abrasions as a result of collision with a cuboid object. It's a cuboid object. A a object that's a cube. Oh, oh. Like a dice. Oh, okay. Just with what would be a cuboid object that he could have hit? A block of wood. Huh? Wood splinters found in the wounds. The oh, disc yeah. is separated. Left shoulder twisted and cracked. Cause of death, extensive trauma to the cervical segment, shifting to the sixth vertebrae. The fifth vertebrae. Disruption of the nervous system, likely as a result of a fall from a height. Mm, so being pushed. We could talk to the court pathologist mm. to an analyze the Stair, autopsy report. Yeah, stairs could be wood. Stairs could be wood. Thing. Yeah. So this makes it sound like he did fall down the stairs, but the thing I noticed was the uh, bruise on his temple, mm -hmm. which means they held a gun to his head. Mm. So maybe like forcing him to go down the stairs? Well, they, they said in some, one of the other places we saw that he they had held a gun to his head. Mm. But that, that guy was short. Would he been holding the gun up? Oh, it yeah. says here that he forced the victim to open the safe. Oh. Sense on the but then he took him up the stairs and Giles held Dawson at gunpoint. He forced him to open the safe. There was a struggle. He pushed the victim down the stairs. Then he searched the house chaotically. Hmm. Where was the safe? I thought the safe was in the flower shop. The I had the impression the safe was in the flower shop as well. How'd they get upstairs? And plus, the, um, it said organs intact, right? Organs. Maybe it was in the closet, the safe. The safe could have been in the bedroom closet. Yeah, it could have been. In most, in most or in movies, the office. In most movies, that seems There's an is. office. Yeah, he could, it could have been in his closet. office, yeah. which is upstairs. Uh, hmm. That's where he fell from, right? All right, so it's time to close out this um, case. We're at the end of day four, so it's time to finish here. I feel like we do know a lot of information. Yeah, it's just we've yeah. got to figure out how to put it all together. It's going to ask us questions, not just about this case, but about the overarching case as well. Mm. So in order to start that, I click final report here on the tablet. I saw the food questions. Yep. It's like you've <laughs> kept up with our food. It I've says, kept up with leads. You should finish your game first. Are you... Ready now to see and answer questions for case Case one, a man with a golden watch? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. 
All right, final report. During the investigation, our team has determined that Rupert Owens found the watch beneath the floorboards of the porch of his family home. Mm -hmm. Rupert Owens got the watch from his mother. Mm -hmm. Rupert Owens bought the watch in a pawn shop. We don't know where Rupert Owens got the watch. I mean, so could've... Rupert is the, the, first, the suspect that we had in custody. Yeah, I mean, it's a son he's the of one Marcus. That told us they found it on the floorboard. But yeah. now Marcus, Marcus, his dad owned a pawn shop. Yeah, but he. But Rupert had nothing to do with the pawn shop. Then he got it out of the floorboards. We got it out of the yeah. floorboards. Yeah. I think we got it out of the floorboards. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna click. He found we had the nothing watch. Nothing to disprove that he he said that's where he got it and he said right, that's where right. he placed it when Mariner, the big Mariner. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we have nothing to disprove that. So yeah, I think that's. Like there's no Rupert Owens to sink with the Titanic. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have hey, also Arflick. concluded, hey Arflick, that Marcus Owens, the father of Rupert Owens, was the previous owner of the watch, which he bought from Horatio Dawson. He stole from Dawson's house. He got from Henry Giles in exchange for silence, or we don't know how he, he stole got it. from Dawson's house. Well, there was an assumption that he was the accomplice of the of the, the, I think the stealing, the based, robbery. Based on the dates and how everything went, I think he would have stole that. He would have like gotten out. But, but we don't Giles. know if he was there or not. We have not. We don't know if he was there. We have nothing to put him there. Because it was. He had type O blood. Is that right? There Something was technically like another person there. Didn't we read something about there was another person? Well, they thought that this guy was the. Um, Suspected accomplice. Yeah, I th I think he was there. I think he's st I think he stole it from that house and he hid it under the floorboards, knowing that they were going to come and get him. And then he was arrested on suspicion. They killed the other guy to keep him quiet, and then he got whacked in in jail to keep him quiet. That's how I think that goes. But so we know he didn't buy he didn't buy it from no, Horatio Dawson for sure. No. The question is, did he steal it from Dawson's house, or did he get it from Henry Giles in exchange for silence? Did Henry say, look, I'm going to give you this watch so you keep quiet about the, the murder, the murder and would, the robbery? Who would have stopped him in jail? Who, like, just the Oh, numbers? the people, the Nazis and all of that. The bigger scam. The huger, giant the story that's going giant, on. Yeah. I mean, well, Giles was still alive at the time that they got out. So, yeah, I mean, he could have. Oh, he denied being involved in the robbery. Testimony of the Lily Garrett confirmed the suspect's alibi. And they said yeah. he was, she was but lying. But someone said she was lying. Yeah. yeah. So maybe he was involved in the Jack robbery. Jack Rivers then. said Lily was lying. Yeah, I said Jack. I think he stole it. Yeah. Tell you, they keep I think we saw enough evidence that he must have been lying. What does everybody else think? He's, I think he stole it. That was my first Joe? suspicion. A robbery. We have no indication that he got it in exchange for silence. No, I That's say a, he stole. We would have to make a leap to get to there. Right. He st he stole it from that house. What do you think, Jesse? You're no, just so quiet. All right, Joe. I'll right. say he was an accomplice up there. He stole it from Dawson's house. At some point, the watch was in the possession of Horatio Dawson, and we believe that he brought it back as a memento of the campaign in Europe. He received it as a bribe while stationed at Brenner Pass. He received it as a thank you for saving a life during a shooting in Sicily. We don't know how he got it. I have no clue how that guy got that Oh, that explains a lot. This, the only thing with Sicily, that's a that's an Italy thing, right? The, so the thing about him is he was well decorated, remember? Mm -hmm. He had a purple yeah. heart and mm -hmm. all that stuff. What if he was never a bad guy? What if it turns out... The reason he got the watch is because he helped somebody who had the watch. Now, okay, mm. that dude, the German guy that was supposedly had the watch, it said that after he took that surname that he left Italy then disappeared. That's right. I think I think he gave it to him as a thank you. I choose option C. Yep. What do you guys think? I think yeah, he's a good guy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He was just a Poor little pets. I think Is he had no idea what what ha what was gonna ha what was happening to him. I, I mean, he, he got I pushed even think, down his own stairs. I even think that home. picture was Poor um thing. was edited. 
You know the one that you said, this picture looks edited. He's like okay. over on the side of the picture. Yeah. It could I been. think we were meant to yeah. imply that he was fo- that it was photoshopped yeah. that way. Hmm. I say he received it. You don't know. Yeah. But what's the whole thing with Brown being involved? And he knew that... What about Brown? That Brown knew... The later one. Crazy enough, I wrote down uh, that Samuel Brown's name and his number, but I had zero information on him. Just that he's old dude. Old dude. Dawson, Buckman, and Brown. That's probably Brown. He just asked them about him. That's all. He asked this doctor about these three. Yeah. Or what doctor? Um, we don't know that. So Brown was the boss of Brenner and Caxon and Nick Thorne. I say that's Brown probably. These three. Yeah, but, but yeah, he like he's, looks like he's yeah. very much not even a part of this picture. He's I think probably they, photoshopped him. I think they photoshopped that for the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all I was saying. I say thank you. That's it's my Nick, vote. Nick Torn didn't return. Were they buddies? Brown, their boss, the guy that that again. Why is Brown in this at all then? Brown was a dirty guy who. Like falsifies records. Yep. Who would have maybe falsified Dawson's? The picture. Probably put him in there, added him. Why, though? I don't know. To make they don't have up. that kind of technology when Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. He probably could. I mean, could paste so, it. so. Yeah, this is from so 1967. The, so, the thing is, so the thing is, again, we're looking at a bigger story, which is this, this spider network. Yeah. And these people are involved. And so I'm thinking, since it says Dawson, Buckman, and Brown, ask about Dawson, Buckman, and Brown. And since we know Dawson's there, he's dead. Buckman's the Nazi, and Brown is the guy who who we also had the General Brown say, hey, stop looking up at the General stuff Brown. on him. With right. The, with the, uh, and he sent it by fax. Yeah. Where are Dawson's diaries? Question mark. Marcus? No. So somebody came. Doesn't and make some, sense. Some, somebody came and did something to Dawson, and took his diaries or something. Hmm. I don't recall anything on how Dawson got the watch. Yeah, that that one's. Uh, Maybe we should put we, we don't, don't know. Since we're oh, divided. here's the thing. Uh, if you push, you don't know. You get zero points. But if you push the wrong answer, you get minus one point. Oh. So maybe since we're divided, just to make it zeroed out, we should put that we don't know because we're very divided. Because like, we don't. That's the other thing. We don't know how Buckman got the watch, other than he was. Would we rather get a minus right? one because we're? I mean, how, 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 how do we wrong? get? How do we know that he got the watch to start with? The, the KB. I don't know that. Why was he given to us at the beginning to start with the Nazi guy? Um, man, that was a long time ago. The only thing I have under that dude... I mean, he was known to that He may be yeah. dead. That he had a spider above his right so wrist. So he had the watch, right? That. Yeah, the no- the watch was stolen by a Nazi named Kurt Blutholz. So... So Dawson ends up with it. And we know that they would have used that network to get out, and they may have bribed army men... Use that's it what it as said. a bribe. Use it as a bribe to get out. So I yeah, think that's that's what I was thinking. So we're going for the bribe. All right. Yes. Because of the what we read on Wikipedia too. I mean this this said this started us with him to start with, right? So don't yep. wait for it because we because he's not he's not during a shooting and. Mm. I mean I don't know where that third line comes from whether we. we <laughs> I mean, the other thing was his autopsy. I was hoping it would say some mark because he got a purple heart, which mm-hmm. means he was wounded. But in the autopsy, it doesn't say there's any previous wound. Yeah. Right? Well, we saw that in his like records in the data in the Antares database. They talked about some wounds he had. Can we go to that? Are we allowed to go back to look at him? 
That's awesome. Scarring under the shoulder blade, a scar on the neck from a cut. Irregular scarring under the shoulder blade. Could be a shot. I don't think they know that, but... Irregular could be... He had tried to assault Colonel Brown. I forgot about that. And the charges were dropped. Yeah. Because they decided to work together? But he was murdered two months later. Right. And I'm leaning towards Brian. Oh. Can make it do it again? Yeah, it looks like it. I'm glad we discovered it early. Well, maybe if I pushed back instead of doing all this. What did we decide on this one? We decided we he was stolen. Stole yeah, he, he was there. Okay, here we're going for this one. Yes. As for where Kurt got the watch, our team was able to deduce that. Whoa, we didn't get any of this. <laughs> uh, I think we have to say we don't know. No, we don't know. Stole from his patient, stole from a museum, or you received Who is it? Maybe he's Spons the doctor. Life. The doctor. Yeah. yeah, that's why I think he's the doctor, but the life of a rich Jewish prisoner. Wow. My gut says that he did it for sparing a life since he was killing so so many with the with the treatments. But oh yeah, he was a doctor. Remember, he was doing all those yeah, weird testing all those on testing on people in Auschwitz. Well, I mean, he's not a great guy. He could have stole it from. Yeah, I mean, he could have stole it. Probably not. The I, I think we don't know the answer yeah, to this. Yeah. I like the patient one. Yeah. Those findings conclude our investigation in the matter of the Golden Watch. Delaware sends you an email with some additional questions. First of all, were you able to determine who might have killed Horatio Dawson? I think it's Giles. Well, we think it's Giles. The police report said Giles did it. I think that's right. Yeah. Unless it's a much bigger conspiracy that we didn't uncover. Right. I said Giles. I also say Giles. Yeah. Any, anyone opposed? And from what I can see in Mr. Dawson's file, he was a soldier in the 7th Army. Mm -hmm. Do you know about any officer that might have been involved with Dawson? Yes. Brown. Colonel Samuel Brown. Yep. Go for it. Because he's the one he tried to attack. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you did almost great. Oh my gosh! And that's almost great. Uh, actually, I haven't put in the stress tokens yet. It's about to go down. Oh gosh. Okay, it didn't go down. Oh, it Thirteen go down. out of forty. Could wow. have been better. Yes, yeah, Slater was a police officer, and we had no, no indication that he did was. Did I get under twenty? No. <laughs> oh, what did we wow. do? What did we miss? We well, we're about to find out. I'm just going to log our um, Is it score Slater, here. Is Slater the police Yes. Slater was the... Yeah, uh, he was the, the one that deceased one with the deceased, funeral. Yeah. Wow. Well. Where did we not go? I know. Yeah, I was like, what did we not do? <laughs> from, from okay, so we're going to go to close yeah. the case and see what happened. I had a similar experience. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you for playing detective. <laughs> um, you have finished your job for the time being before heading to the nearest pub for dinner the whole team meets with Delaware in his office thank you very much for completing your investigation and make no mistake this was an important case he smiles briefly and points to the screen I've read your report I've also done a little bit of my own research let me point out some, ma some things I find particularly interesting first of all Mr. Owens Jr. Mr. Owens Jr. The oh Ru Marcus Mark Owens yeah. it seems that you're no, right Rupert. about that yeah, Rupert he found the watch underneath the floorboards on the porch of his family home. It seems that his father hid the watch there. Rupert Owens is just a small fish, a local swindler, who needed money, so he sold the watch to the auction house. Your investigation has determined that the previous owner of the watch was Rupert Owens' father, Marcus Owens. You believe that he stole it from Dawson's house. I find this implausible. I believe Horatio Dawson was in a dire need of money, and he tried to sell his valuables to Marcus Owens, including the watch. That tipped Henry Giles to rob his house. 
-hmm. Now, Mr. Dawson makes the case really interesting. He seems like an important piece of the puzzle. You think he received the watch as a bribe while stationed at Brenner Pass. I agree with that. While he was probably an honest guy and a good soldier, Horatio Dawson was most likely pressured by his fellow soldiers to take the bribe from a rich German who wanted a safe passage through the checkpoint at Brenner Pass. That rich German had to be Kurt himself, escaping Europe under a fictional name. So that brings us to the last piece of the puzzle. How did Kurt Pulgots get the watch? I'm sorry to hear that you didn't remember my briefing. I specifically stated that the watch was robbed oh. from the Museum of the Land I in Posen. I have read that and like didn't... Yeah. It must have been Blue Thoughts. During his escape, he used it exactly as he intended to secure himself a safe passage through the Allied checkpoints. Well done, detectives. I believe your report is sufficient for our administration to explain to the Polish government how the watch stolen from them during World War II ended up in the U.S. You can be proud of yourselves. The very first Antares investigation oh, yeah. is a success. I even read that, and now that they say it, I remember it, but because but, you were like, oh, but, we can yeah, go back to the book, we don't need to write this down. It, right? uh, so, additional Sorry. questions, which were not a part of your report, so there's no additional explanation for them. Blue background means that you have answered correctly, while red background means you have provided hey! a wrong answer. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Frenzalo, you. for the follow. We heart you. <laughs> Welcome to the hearty party. So they, uh, yeah, Frenzalo. Thanks, thanks for making for... us feel better about our own. Yeah. <laughs> so who killed Horatio Dude, Dawson? Just time. Not Henry Giles. And which officer might have been involved with Dawson? Colonel Sam Brown is correct. Yeah. So who killed him? The Marcus guy? The bigger, the bigger scope. Or the... we don't know. Or we don't you know. Know. someone? Yeah, I think they we said would've... none of the above, or not Marcus guy. And then matching evidence we have over here. Um. <clears throat> no matching evidence found. The gold watch. Yeah, I remember when it popped up on the screen and said that. We got that. Oh, so there's two things we're missing here. We didn't yeah. get evidence mm -hmm. for. So we got the cigarette cigar box and the watch belonged to Marcus Owens and Horatio Dawson's house. But we're still missing two other things. Wow. Could so, have been better. Uh, yeah. What did I take from this experience? We suck at these games. Uh, yes. yeah. Every time we play a game like this, uh, Chronicles of Crime, Sherlock Holmes, uh, Mythos Tales, do you like this more or less than Chronicles of Crime? I liked this more. I liked this more. I did. Wow. I liked this one what more. What about you guys? I don't know. Though I feel like these people outside outside of giving us these and like yeah, what is this for? For you? you spending this, <laughs> these were just you. I'm like, what am I supposed to even use this for? Because oh, two sided. Like if you don't play with enough players, you flip them over like this, and they become uh, uh, consultants. Okay. Gotcha. I just never um, used mine. I used mine like three times. Yeah. I can't help yours that you guys didn't use yours. Well, Mine's yours a write good. a report action. I don't yeah. even know what that is. Gets us more of these stars. We never needed mine, though. I could have removed your X's to let you use it again using the stars, but you yeah. never needed that. So if we had if we had realized that we could have pressed people a lot more, we would have done that. But, but then, I well, look how many stars we ended up with at the end. We, I know, we but how do, do you it. get more of these? We never found a way My to My person more. can convert these into... Anything. A jester. Oh, anything? Yeah. Oh. And his person can convert two of these into anything. Okay. And so your person yeah, mine, makes more of these. Mine didn't convert one. It adds one. Oh, so it just adds yours one. Yours converts one to another type. Mine just adds one. And mine helps to take type. the X's mm. off of yours so you can do it again. Yeah. You, so we had all we needed to keep pressing people. We just didn't realize how yeah. easy it would be to press people a little bit more. But I think we... So they said that the average is that you end up with 20 cards. Um, let's see how right. we did. One, Even two, on the other three, side? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, the thing 13, is, we answered, we answered the 14, 15, Marcus 16, stole it, 17, 17, which is 18, 19, 20. 20. Exactly the average. the average, and we have no idea what happened. But the thing was, is we answered that one, Marcus Owen stole it, but we didn't know. Yeah, I mean, we knew that Giles stole it. We were just saying from this information and that the alibi may be false that he may have been. Yeah, he stole I, from something. I find this so. very interesting. Funeral ADM, lunch, Greek salad, 
Uh, worst lunch coffee? Coke. Yeah, can we sh can we show yeah. that? Can we show Ray uh, Jesse's yes. notes? Yeah, my Jesse's. notes. This is a good. This is a okay, partner. so here's Jesse. Look, okay, here's my notes for the day, like stuff about things. I had it all night. Leads. I had like investigation, interviews, the the items. There's my notes. Here's Jesse's. Wow. <laughs> lunch. I thought mine was Sandwich. pretty important. Worst sludge coffee here. Chinese Coke food. donuts, newer classic. Yes. <laughs> we never found who Richard Chopsticks? Briggs was. Yes. The verdict was it was the Nazis. Uh, like right. it always is. <laughs> oh, by the way, Arflick, I watched your video on my Discord and it was very nice. I, I enjoyed what you had sent in for the um, the stream star. It was very nice. But yeah, Ronald, we are terrible at these games. Uh, and that puts a ding on it for me. A ding in a bad way. Is that we're just so bad at these? I do like this one much better than yes, the other one. Yes, I do yeah, like this I one really better do. than the other one. Um, I thought the other one, it's just this like you didn't also, have any also idea where we, to go. When we, the things we were wrong about, we were like, oh, yeah. The, where the other one was like, it was like that. And we were like, what? Who who knew about what that was? Yeah. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I just, the presentation here, though, it's called Detective, a modern crime board game. And your first mission is like from 70 years ago. <laughs> using the modern technology to try and solve uh, the cold okay. case. Yeah, so it's like a cold, cold case, case from years ago. So we're it. using <laughs> the Antares system, looking that up. You guys are Googling and using Wikipedia, and sometimes they say you're going to use Google Maps and stuff like that to look stuff up. So the people are mostly dead, but, you know, it's still really interesting. And mm. I like that they're using real-life things. It's like the... Uh, we call I do it like that part. Adjusted reality? No, that's not right. Um, AR, um, augmented. Like, augmented. augmented reality. So there's real life things that are in the story. That yeah, are, even you know, on the back of these cards, there's like, it looks like real, like real people on the back of the cards. There's a real life person on the front of the card as well. I know, but like a little like story thing. Oh. So, so it's really, it's really cool. I mean, I wish I would have been able to use my person more, but just never came up. Um, so thank you guys for being here on this, yes. uh, Gen Can't day, our, our final day of Gen Can't coverage, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we'll be back next year with more Gen Can't coverage. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you for chatting with us. Thank you for the follows and the subs today. We had some <clears throat> great subs today. And um, I'll tell you what we have coming up tomorrow. We have a much requested game meaning one person requested it, <laughs> Bunny Kingdom. Ah, uh, yes. So tune in for Bunny Kingdom tomorrow, and then on Wednesday we'll be playing the game that Melissa requested, Marvel Legendary. Yes, superheroes. Hey. Excelsior. And then Excelsior. on Friday I'm flying out for Austin, Texas, for Board Game Bash. If you're going to be there, make sure you come say hey to me, play a game with me, because I'm going to be alone. The only person I know there will be. Travis and Magritte. Yeah. But I don't actually know Magritte yet, so. Right. Yes, Legendary, as I said, why I uh, requested it was the very first game that got me into the hobby, so. And on Sunday, I so won't be here, one? but these guys will be here mm -hmm. to play Pipeline. Mm. Or, Is that right? Or to, or to, or <laughs> yeah. to be decided. Or to, or be, to decided. be decided. Why are, you not, why are you not playing Pipeline? <laughs> I, well, they are kind of questioning it. We'll, we'll see. We haven't played it yet. That game yeah. is a hot game right now. I suggest you definitely play it. We can wait a week and involve you. Yeah. That's that's the that's I the, don't my want thinking about. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh yay, Mary. I will also not be here the next week either. So. No. Yeah, that's the week you are playing Inish. No, oh, well, we had a request for on the uh, Patreon for. Um, Mage Knight and Battle of the Five Armies. So. Well, we can do Mage Knight. That's oh, three. Oh, yeah. You guys can play that. Well, we can't do Battle we can do of the Five Armies because it's only two-person. Yeah. yeah, we could do we a co-op Mage, Mage Knight. Mage Knight. Be fun. Yeah, we well, something whole, mysterious will be here next week. we have the whole week. journey in right. Middle Earth to finish. Journey. When our journey's not done. Our journey's yeah. not yet Some done. Some of our journeys might be done. It's <laughs> <laughs> never done. It's never done. Um, so if you're, uh, you know, always remember to hit that follow button, and if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe, and then go over to twitch.tv slash games to talk to us live in person. And here at Heartboard Games, we love to spread the board game love. 
That's right. Which means we like to rate over to other content providers before we sign off. So when we get over there, make sure you hit those meeples with the hearts in them and let them know that Heart Four Games sent you. Who are we going to go see today? Today we're going to go check out Buddy Wilbury. He's Ooh. having his first board game stream. <gasps> Yay! Playing no Arkham first. Horror, and he looks like he's playing with every single expansion. <laughs> he's yeah. playing t- second edition. Yes, second edition of Arkham Horror with Ooh. like one of my faves. He's got three boards in addition to the. Uh, he's not playing with every expansion, but three boards in addition to the. There's main only board. three Let boards in addition oh, to is? the main board. All right. The other ones there are all go. small boxes. Let me pop in real quick. Well, so never I mind. Journey on that's with the uh, that's what they're doing. Too. Wow. <laughs> So and how many people are playing? It looks like just two. Oh my goodness! <laughs> He's a glutton for punishment. It sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see some up. Oh, there we are. Okay. Let's go Anyways. Yeah. So we're, let's go say hi to Buddy. And until next time, the box is closed. closed. See you next time, folks. Bye, bye, Maggie. Our flicks. See you later.